Hello, everybody. Good evening. I believe we're uh, just about ready to get started. Sorry about all the error messages and things. I, apparently, that happens all the time because the servers for this uh, servers for this. I almost said Cerberus because it is the Cerberus network. Uh, the servers for this game are pretty out of date. Sorry about that. Ah, blanket burrito. Good to have you here, Kylie. So, um, the results of the poll are telling me that our first destination is going to be Archangel um, before we go to get uh, Morden. So, uh, it looks like that's what we're going to do after a short little layover on the Citadel, uh, talk to the rest of the crew, there's a couple more people to meet down in engineering, so we'll do that first. Um, otherwise, uh, let's uh, jump back into the game. Now, um, I do have an interesting topic in mind for discussion uh, for the mission to go and get Morden, uh, and it has to do more with... Uh, real-world topical circumstances, because, you know, in order to recruit Morden, if you're unaware of this, uh, it involves going into a plague zone. So, there's that. Uh, let me make sure my... Uh... Yeah, okay, 16 by 9. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, okay, never mind. I thought it looked funny for Yeah, anyway. Uh, so it does involve going into a plague zone, so if you are in particular uh, interested in uh, in that sort of thing, if you would prefer to do that one now and hold off on uh, Archangel until either later tonight or maybe even next week, uh, let me know uh, if you guys want to change your mind. Otherwise, uh, there's always stuff to talk about throughout whichever we wind up doing, so I'm not worried about that. Um, so a thought did occur to me. Um, this, crew quarters. An interesting little design choice. Um, so I like that they include this because you know it's realistic. We have an actual human crew, um, but a couple of odd things about that. One, uh, the the human crew on the Normandy SR2, even though it's a larger ship because it's mostly computerized with ED with the AI, uh, has a smaller crew than the Normandy SR1, the previous one <coughs> from the last game. I could be wrong about this, and I did not go back to check, but if I'm not mistaken, there are no crew quarters whatsoever on the Normandy SR-1, the previous ship. That's a little bit odd to me, that there is, there are no crew quarters. Um, I mean, maybe we can, we can just sort of hand wave and say, well, they're, they're in a section of the ship that you can't access. Okay, that would be fine, but there's... There don't seem to be any areas of the ship in the previous game that you can't access, so that's just... I think that is an, over, an oversight, although I could be uh, I could be somewhat mistaken. So let's talk to these two. You came all the way down here to see us? You're speaking to our commanding officer. I'm touring the ship, getting to know my crew. I'm Engineer Ken Donnelly, handling the power control systems. This is Gabby. That's Engineer Gabriella Daniels, actually. I'm responsible for the propulsion systems. What can we do for you, Commander? Uh, so, Kylie says, I'm reading a book currently that has a lot of the plaguey vibe. Uh, it's weird how much it's similar to the uh, the situation in the world today. I only finished chapter one, but it's eerie, it's eerie already. So plaguey vibe is in, is in the Black Death, like 14th century Black Death kind of thing. Because uh, that would make, that'd make enough of a difference. And also it could just be to be fair, a lot of authors will write uh, modern conventions in the past, so how we today would deal with the plague, we kind of envision that is how the past, the people in the past would deal with it. So that's always an issue with reading historical fiction, if that's what you're talking about. Uh, that said, I mean, yes, uh, there are things that humans and, well, you know, persons uh, will always do. Um, rational animals, I should say, will always do uh, when threatened with, you know, the infection of, of disease, and it has to do with sequestering, and it has to do with with um, the strengthening of borders is, I think, the, the, the broadest way of putting it. 
Uh, cleanliness has a lot to do with keeping things apart from one another so things don't infect one another. Um, and so you'll see that in any circumstance, regardless of time period, regardless of technology, regardless of whatever else. So that was ra that was a little bit rambly, but uh, I mean, I can say more if you're interested, that sort of thing. Where'd you receive your training? Both Gabby and I started in the Alliance serving on the SSV Perugia. She flew in the first wave at the Battle of the Citadel. We saw Sovereign firsthand. Why did you leave the Perugia? After you died, Anderson lost political clout. The Council backslid on the Reaper menace. They discounted Sovereign as an isolated threat, as a single- Which was bullshit. They said your warnings of greater danger were mistaken or delusional. We lost respect for Alliance leadership. We need to fight the real enemy, and only Cerberus seem to be doing that. What do you think about Cerberus? Actually, we don't know much about the organization other than the Normandy team. We know our mission and who's in charge. We're off to kick the Collectors right in their daddy bags. That's enough for me. <laughs> I love these two, especially Donnelly. Um, a funny little side note, these two remind me a lot of um, uh, Fitzsimmons from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., if any of you uh, have watched that show. Um, this came out long before uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. did, and I have a sneaking suspicion that these two are kind of the inspiration for those characters, because uh, they have very much a very, a very similar dynamic, and he is also Scottish. The only difference is that... Uh, that um, not Donnelly, the other one, the other, the, the girl is, uh, she's American, whereas uh, Simmons is, is English, but it's still quite close. It's, it's, a, it's very much the same relationship. I, I love it. Are you set up okay down here? We can't complain. I just wish it didn't take so long to calibrate the FBA arrays. Kenneth, you're complaining. <laughs> what kind of problems are you having? When they upgraded the Normandy design, they got a bit sloppy with the FBA couplings. I won't bore you with the tech, but there is an array of attenuators in the primary power transfer system that channels the field, please. Kenneth, you're boring the commander with tech. In short, if we had T6 FBA couplings installed, it'd save us a lot of maintenance time each day. Why isn't something like that already installed? It's probably just a design oversight. Efficiency isn't affected. It's a maintenance issue. Also, the T6 model can be hard to find. Nash and Stellar Dynamics discontinued them. We could probably find used ones in the Omega markets, but we have no time for shore leave. Carry on. Will do, Commander. All right, so we'll do that. I'm amazed Shepard came down to see us. I told you she would. Yeah, we're Paragons. We talk to everybody. Everybody possible, absolutely. Um, let's go to our quarters and check, our, check the mail. Uh, armor? I don't think I need to check armor, but we'll see. Um... Ah, uh, hey, it's Caden. That's nice. Uh, let's see. Messages. Right, click. Uh, all right, from Councillor Anderson. Off, on the off chance that the rumors are true, I'm not going to try and do Keith David's voice. On the off chance the rumors are true and you actually are alive, I need you to. I need you to come and talk to me on the Citadel. A lot has changed in the last two years. You put me on the council, and it's only fair that you be allowed to speak for yourself about what you've been hearing. All right, that's it. I thought there would be more stuff, although it, more things might come in after the Citadel, that's uh, also possible. Uh, any different new armor? New. No, no, no armor. Alright. I, I will say, uh, on, on to Kylie's point, <clears throat> uh, Daniels and Donnelly are a little bit less cinnamon rolly. Um, they are, uh, they are definitely like cute and sweet kind of thing, but not not as uh, not as light and fluffy as Fitzsimmons, to be fair. Oh, hey, look, we're in the Omega. We're in the Omega. Uh, do I need fuel? Oh yeah, I really do. This is a new mechanic that I'm not going to drag you guys through very much. Um, I'm not going to be doing a lot of the planet scanning on screen. On stream, I'm probably going to go between streams and scan a lot of the planets for, for resources and things. Uh, that is usually one of the largest complaints about this game, mechanically. Um, actually, so Kylie asked if they're the stabby versions of Daniels and Tom Lee. Um 
I would say quite the opposite. Uh, Fitzsimmons actually gets some action eventually. Uh, these two are just strictly engineers, uh, but they are in the middle of the action uh, more so than Fitzsimmons are. Uh, look, Earth. You could go visit Earth, but actually, you know what? Uh, let's just get this joke out of the way, really. Because I did mention uh, planet scanning, and this is a major minigame uh, in Mass Effect 2, and it's one that a lot of people will complain about a lot. So let's uh, let's go ahead and um, let's start scanning for minerals. Let's see. It says depleted, but oh oh oh, it's some iridium. Really, Commander? Research projects, iridium is used to upgrade heavy weapons, submachine guns, and assault rifles. Probing Uranus. In research projects, Thanks, palladium Edie. is used to upgrade heavy pistols, armor, and cybernetics. Alright, so now that we're uh, now that we're done probing Uranus, let's go back to actually doing the things that we're supposed to be doing in the game. I needed to get that out of the way, probably as immediately as possible. Uh, just as a check, the sound, the uh, game audio is not overpowering, is it? As I know, once again, this is a relatively loud game. Uh, so if ever a game audio is getting too excessive, just let me know and I will uh, switch out and turn it down. Alright. Um, okay, so let's land on the Citadel. I'm just going to let this play out because this is, once again, landing on the Citadel is almost always the most gorgeous part of any of these games. Okay, the audio is still a little bit louder than that, so all right, I'll, um, you know what, while it's on a loading screen, I'm going to jump out and uh, turn it down just a little bit. Let's try that. There. Uh, I guess we're bringing Miranda and Jacob. Uh, oh, hey, look, I get to level them both up a lot. Um, I don't want to squad just because it's, uh, let's see. Uh, let's definitely go with field. Uh, we will see why later. It's super useful. Um, alright, so let's go with, uh, that is good. All of her powers are actually very, very good, which is kind of annoying. Wait, really? I need... Ah, uh, jeez. Alright, well, that's a passive bonus for me. Oh, right, I need... Okay, loyalty missions you need to do the, the final thing. Alright, cool. Uh, I don't need to care about weapons. It's fine. That, that reflects some of our choices. We uh, we decided to save the council. This recruits is a 20 kilo ferrous slug. Feel the weight! Every five seconds, the main gun of an Everest-class dreadnought accelerates 1 to 1.3% of light speed. It impacts with the force of a 38 kiloton bomb. That is three times the yield of the city buster dropped on Hiroshima back on Earth. That means Sir Isaac Newton is the deadliest son of a bitch in space. Now, serviceman Burnside, what is Newton's first law? Sir, an object in motion stays in motion, sir. No credit for partial answers, maggot. Sir, unless acted on by an outside force, sir. Damn straight! 
I dare to assume you ignorant jackasses know that space is empty. Once you fire this hunk of metal, it keeps going till it hits something. That can be a ship, or the planet behind that ship. It might go off into deep space and hit somebody else in 10,000 years. If you pull the trigger on this, you are ruining someone's day, somewhere and sometime. That is why you check your damn targets. That is why you wait for the computer to give you a damn firing solution. That is why, Serviceman Chung, we do not eyeball it. This is a weapon of mass destruction. You are not a cowboy shooting from the hip. Sir, yes sir. All right, that is one of the most legendary little exchanges from this game, so I, need, I needed to let them say that. Um, yeah, that's, a, that's, a, that's something that, to think about, which is often discounted in space combat. I'm really glad that they address it. Um, oftentimes that goes unaddressed. Obviously security has tightened since you were last here. Shut it down. What? Do you seriously think? Yeah, okay. Sorry for the inconvenience, ma'am. Our scanners are picking up false readings. They seem to think you're... Uh, dead. Nah, I was only mostly dead. Try finding that option on government paperwork. <laughs> we need to get that cleared up for you. Why don't you talk to my captain? He's just beyond the scanners on the right. Yeah, it's... Like, uh, like he said, it's best not to You'll have to make him scream a little. He's not gonna space. tell you everything just because you ask. I, I know, sir. If you don't have the stomach or you're worried about being reported, I can take care of it. No, sir. I can handle it. Uh, so, <laughs> apparently more like compromised as you might be. I absolutely love Captain Bailey. Um, Max says, the NPC, ex uh, the NPC exchange I remember the most is between the refugee kid and the Turian in Mass Effect 3. Yes, I, uh, I'm to the point where I kind of avoid that conversation because that is, um, th that is an emotional freight train. Um, like, that is, that is pretty, that's pretty serious. Um, we'll eventually see, um, we will eventually see what you're talking about there. Uh, eventually. Uh, it's also in multiple parts, like, you have to leave and come back, so, um, I don't know, we might just leave and come back the area when we eventually get to that, so we can just get the whole thing in one sitting, um, because it's really impactful, um, but I think maybe it's more significant if you kind of just get bits and pieces of it over time as you happen across it. So it's uh, it that that is yeah I I have to agree that one that is that's rough. Yes, I see the problem already, Commander Shepard. My consul says you're dead. You're not worried I'm some imposter claiming to be me. We have the best screening equipment in the galaxy. Those scanners can sample DNA from skin flakes. Hell, if you have unregistered gene mods, they can even figure those out. Your sergeant said you could help with that. Usually, you'd have to go through the station security administration to reactivate your IDs, then to customs and immigration to regain access to the Citadel itself, and probably a stop by the Treasury. Spending a year dead is a popular tax dodge. But I can see a you're one. a busy woman. So how about I just press this button right here, and we call it done? Couldn't one of us, or both of us, get into trouble for that? There's no way to fool the DNA scanners in that tunnel. You're you. Why wait in long lines and fill out a mass of useless <laughs> copy paperwork to get to the same place? The council does everything by the book. They've had thousands of years to write it. Sometimes things need to get done without a committee vote. Okay, so first of all, uh, yeah, there totally is a way to, to fool those scanners that we find out about in the next game, which is which is really dumb, but they do it. Um, and the other thing is, this is why I love Captain Bailey, is that he understands what the process is for and why it's there, uh, but... Um, and so that's how he knows how and when and why to circumvent the rules. Right, so he knows that the whole point of this process is to confirm somebody's identity, but he also knows that he has just confirmed Shepard's identity. So he can just do the thing that he needs to do. Bypass all of the all of the red tape, or, you know, get it done off screen, so to speak. Um, and I I just really admire that in uh, in an action kind of guy rather than uh, you know, avoiding bureaucracy like this. That'd be great. Done. You're good to go. 
You should head up to the Presidium, though. The Council would probably like to know that one of their lost specters is still kicking. What's the easiest way to get to the Presidium from down here? Head back through the security checkpoint and take a public shuttle. Whoops. What did I just do? Oh, no. I clicked out of the game. Sorry about that. Hold on. Uh -oh. <sighs> well, um, okay, so I need to... I'm sorry about this. Okay, yep, yeah, that's what I thought. All right, it crashed. Uh, so, I was afraid of that, that was going to happen, but all right, let's rush back through what I just did. I apologize once again. We will um, breeze through any conversations we've already been through. I believe it auto-saves when you land on the Citadel, so that shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, this happens on occasion, apparently, so. Yeah, I know that. All right. Hopefully. Yeah, this is putting us on the Citadel, I believe. It should. I need to read my powers, but that's fine. I can do that relatively quickly. Um, and pull field, and operative, and done. And done. Alright, skip. Alright, they're gonna talk about stuff. Let them talk about stuff. We're back. Obviously, security. Has what? Our ski <laughs> Why don't you talk to my captain? He's just beyond the scanners yep, yep. on the right. Moving on. Moving along. You'll have to. Okay. Yes, I see the problem already, Commander Shepard. Hell, if you have unregistered, then to cost. So how about I just press the? The council does everything by yeah, the. Let's do. You should head up to the Presidium, though. The council would probably like to know that one of their lost specters is still kicking. I will. Having access to the Council and the Spectre's resources would be useful. Yeah. The Council can get anything. Best thing about working CSEC is that any equipment, information, or money you need, you get. Anyway, something else you need? Or can I get back to work? Uh, yeah, How'd you end up questions. working on the Citadel? I started with the Alliance way back when, but the traveling was killing me. It's a shitty life if you're trying to raise a family, seeing your kids every six months. I joined C-Sec so I could stay in one place, put down roots. You like life here on the Citadel? Yeah, life here is good. A hell of a lot different than life back on Earth. I miss the food, mostly. You just can't get sockeye salmon here on the station. You ever get back Jane there? gets that. Earth, every couple of years, less and less all the time. But when I finish my stint with C-Sec, there's a nice little place in the foothills I'm going to retire to. Not that I'm retiring anytime soon. Hmm. Yeah, he becomes, uh, he sticks around through the third game, so through the course of the entire war. So that's, uh, he's here for a while. Uh, yeah, what about that? That little bit. I overheard your conversation. Make him scream a little. This isn't a presidium. All they have to worry about are protesters outside their free speech zones or someone's poodle crapping on the grass. Down here, we have drugs. Organized crime and murder. Policing a ward is like policing New York City. Sometimes you have to work outside the council's rule book. So yeah, um, that is one thing um, about Bailey. Is that he is, for all of the good aspects of him uh, moving around outside the, uh, the strict rules, uh, that also means that in some cases like this, um, he's in a real ethical gray area or, you know, crossing lines. Uh, in this case, at least possibly, 
Um, now, maybe you can justify... Maybe you can justify... Let's say, violations of procedural justice for the sake of uh, achieving the end that you know that you can achieve through what would otherwise retrospectively be deemed just means, or something like that. Right? If you know that you can uncover evidence that will, in fact, convict, but that evidence is... Uh, can only be illicitly obtained. Well, if you, if you have reason to, if you have reason to know, no, no is important. If you have reason to know that you are correct. Uh, there's an argument that can be made that it's similar to bypassing legal red tape in other areas, right? because in that case, what you're doing is you are, you know, through other means, means that are not, uh, you know, that won't hold up in court, say, for existing, for, uh, for example, but. Uh, they do hold up uh, to ordinary epistemic scrutiny. That it is perfectly reasonable to uh, to come to the conclusion that in this case, say, the suspect is guilty of such and such and that they have, uh, that they are willing to admit it under certain circumstances, let's say, uh, or that they uh, would be willing to uncover evidence for their crimes or for, or for somebody else's crimes, as the case might be. Uh, and in that case, um, if you know this and you can confirm this through, once again, other epistemically uh, responsible means, you can make the argument that this is that it's roughly the same kind of uh, the same kind of process as getting Shepard's ID problems cleared up by, you know, circumventing uh, procedural red tape. Because again, you can see these kinds of judicial barriers as bureaucratic red tape in a sense. Uh, at the same time, the protections are there uh, for an important reason. It's to pre it's to prevent uh, false convictions, because the entire point of the judicial system, uh, uh, particularly the um, particularly the uh, the historic Western judicial system, based going all the way back to uh, to at least Roman law, uh, is to avoid false convictions, right? Avoiding false convictions is the uh, the primary priority of of, uh, of sort of Western judicial practice, um, and it's worth noting most non-Western judicial practices as well. It's it is more or less the baseline for humanity, especially today. Um, there are of course exceptions in different judicial systems, but largely preventing false convictions is the most important aspect. And so, if you have an honest person like I take Bailey to be. You find out he is more or less an honest person. Uh, it's just that he is a bit of a utilitarian. He tends to think of the ends justifying the means, and that the means can can bypass procedural red tape at best, uh, and of course um, be uh, unjustifiably uh, unjustifiable violations of people's rights at worst. So again, there is a line there that he uh, he is off either awfully close to or perhaps dances across. Um, so he's an, he's a he's a sort of mixed character in terms of uh, in terms of uh, in terms of morality, um, but uh, he is he's certainly interesting in that sense. He is very he's very down to earth. He's very real. Down to earth isn't exactly right, but. Also, he's a badass Canadian, which seems to be rare outside of uh, outside of this game. Uh, no offense to Max. Last time I was here, there were no human captains in CSEC. No, CSEC took a lot of casualties when the Geth boarded the Presidium. The Special Response Division was hard hit. They stopped turning their noses up at human resumes. They needed bodies in uniform, and we had the most experienced bodies. It looks like most of the damage from Sovereign's attack has been repaired. The Presidium was pretty shot up, of course. They fixed that first. All the wards got hit with debris when the ship exploded. Most of the damage was superficial, and the Keepers got things restored fast. Tasery Ward got the worst. A big chunk hit near the Dillanaga Concert Hall. They're still clearing wreckage and trying to get power restored. Tell me about this place. All the wards are more or less multicultural, but the other four are dominated by Asari, Turians, or Solarians. In Zakira, we've got major enclaves of Volus, Elcor, and Hanar. There's also a human commercial zone at Shinakiba. 
We've got a few Krogan walking around, and I think I saw a quarry in the other day. I should be going. You need anything else, let me know. Okay. Yavina's back. Uh, nah. Okay, let's, uh, let's buy fish. Good day, my friends. Welcome to the Citadel. Since these stores are owned by the Council, do government employees get a discount? Yes, in fact. Uh, what's your position? I'm a former Spectre. My goodness. I didn't know Spectres quit. I don't believe you qualify for a discount, though. How about if I throw in an endorsement from the woman who defeated Saren? You are Shepard? My goodness. The increase in sales would certainly be worth offering a discount. What do you need me to do? Just voice your endorsement into my console. I'm Commander Shepard, and this is my favorite store on the Citadel. Excellent. <laughs> I will get my clerical VI to add it to our advertising immediately. All right. Discount. Uh, definitely buy a space hamster. That is probably the most uh, important item in the game with uh, Beyond Question. Uh, yeah, of course I want to purchase a space hamster. What do you take me for? Uh, model Normandy. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, first things first, obviously, is buying pets and toys. Uh, that is uh, naturally the first stop on any sensible person's uh, run-through of a uh, of a hardcore and gritty space shooter slash RPG. Uh, how about this guy? I hear this is the best place for food on Zakaro Art. Oh. You heard wrong. This is the best place for food on the whole damn citadel. All right, well, he's fine, not going to Fine, fine. I just discount. need to pick up some spices. Um, amino dextrous and Amino Sinister, if you have it. I don't need either of those. Uh, I do need this uh, for our cook. All right. Okay. Uh, now, um, before we do you too much else... Spice, what cooking school did you say you went uh, Is there stuff over here? No, there's not. Okay, cool. In that case, let's head over to the Presidium and talk to Counselor Anderson. This meeting would be more productive if Udina was to join us. My advisor is unavailable. As counselor, I represent the Voice of Humanity and the Alliance. Shepard will be here at... Oh, Commander. We were just talking about you. It's been a long time, Anderson. I hope the last couple years have treated you right. There have been some rough spots. It's good to have you back. We've heard many rumors surrounding your unexpected return. Some of them are... unsettling. We called this meeting so you could explain your actions, Shepard. We owe you that much. After all, you saved our lives in the battle against Saren and his Geth. I mean, rumors are that, that Shepard is now working for a terrorist organization. It doesn't help that the rumors are true. The Collectors are abducting human colonists in the Terminus systems. Worse... I think they're working for the Reapers. The Terminus systems are beyond our jurisdiction. Your colonists knew this when they left Council Space. You're missing the important part, Counselor. The Reapers are involved. Ah, yes, Reapers. The immortal race of sentient starships allegedly waiting in dark space. Uh, we have dismissed that claim. Shepard, no one else encountered the hologram on Ilos that told you the truth about the Reapers. Only you and your crew ever spoke with Sovereign. I believe you, but without evidence from another source, the others think Saren was behind the Geth attacks. Go back to Ilos and talk to Vigil, or just look at what's left of Sovereign. It's obvious the technology is more advanced than ours. The hologram on Ilos is no longer functional, and we have found nothing to suggest that Sovereign was not a Geth creation. The Geth are capable of remarkable technological achievements. This is probably why Saren recruited them. This Reaper theory proves just how fragile your mental state is. You have been manipulated by Cerberus, and before them, by Saren. He is so rude. Um, also, worth uh, worth adding, um, you, you would think that, uh, that the organic components in Sovereign would tip them off that they were not uh, of Geth origin. Uh, but, to be fair, one, um, well... 
No, actually, I was about to say that hadn't. I was about to say that hadn't been decided yet. That they, that weren't that wasn't officially canon in the second game. Um, they, they didn't figure that out until the third game. That, that reapers are part organic, but no, they do figure that out in the second game. So that should have been accounted for. But I guess at the same time, maybe you can say that the destruction of Sovereign was really uh, was pretty thorough, and there were only mechanical components left over, or something like that. I don't know. Uh, it, it's it's something like that. But, you know, the, the council is not um, prone to believing Shepard, not really inclined to believe Shepard. Uh, I'll talk about some of why my kind of psychologizing as to why I think that is really uh, most significantly the case. Um, but I'll, I'll see what else they have to say here. Saren was an organic. The Geth would never accept him as their leader. They only followed him because he was Sovereign's agent. Saren was a compelling and charismatic individual. He convinced the Geth the Reapers were real. Just as he convinced you. It was part of his plan to attack the Citadel. The Reapers are just a myth, one you insist on perpetuating. We believe that you believe it, but that doesn't make it true. Hmm, yeah. So, <clears throat> so I think uh, part of the main reason why, uh, why the Council is so reticent to believe any of this uh, is due to the instability that it would cause. And so the council, uh, being the the governing body of the largest galactic community, or uh, at least the highest level of the galactic gal the galactic government, more or less, <coughs> um, they're a they're a force for stability. They are they are uh, the kind of what's the function of government, more or less, to keep things stable, right? to keep things the way that they are, uh, and to uh, largely resist. Uh, disruptive change. And that's what this would entail. This would have to entail a very significant and very disruptive change. A response to a threat of this magnitude it would have to be astronomical. It would have to be one hell of a response. And it would have to be uh, very prompt. Um, that would be a, uh, a significant uh, political cost to the counselors. Uh, it's similar to, uh, to something I've discussed discussed on different streams uh, as well, this idea that um, it's, once you go to a certain point, I've talked about this in term in, I think this was in conjunction with uh, with the pandemic and, uh, during a, um, during one of my Red Dead streams, probably. Um, I believe I was talking about, so, um, how once you've gone to a certain point in your quest for power or even in just your rulings uh, in something, it becomes very difficult, uh, if not impossible, to turn to turn that back around and go back on it because it would mean repudiating everything that you've said previously. Uh, in this case, right, the the council would have to fundamentally rethink not only their place in the universe, right, which is already a big deal, but probably more fundamentally for them, uh, their role as politicians in a society which would then have to militarize, right. The council gets less and less important throughout the uh, the war, which we eventually see in the third game. Right? They know that obviously they're civilian politicians. They are they are coordinators. They are not uh, they are not um, they're not military types. They're not the active types like Anderson is, and so of course they would be very reticent to uh, to go along with something that amounts to sort of relinquishing their authority to an extent, or at least fundamentally changing the way their authority plays out. This is uh, this is incredibly difficult for them from both a psychological perspective and then also a, uh, a pragmatic and political perspective. It would, it would harm them for this to be true, and so they are prone to disbelieve it. Right? They they demand a higher standard of proof than if this were the status quo being maintained, or if this were something beneficial to them. They they don't want they don't want it to be true, and so they are not quick to believe it. They're going to demand a much higher standard of evidence from Shepard. I kept Saren from conquering the Citadel. I sacrificed human lives to save this council. We are in a difficult position, Shepard. You are working for Cerberus, an avowed enemy of the council. This is treason, a capital offense. That's too far. Shepard is a hero. I'm on this council too, and I won't let this whitewash continue. Maybe there is a compromise, not a public acknowledgement given your ties, but something to show peripheral support. 
Shepard, if you keep a low profile and restrict your operations to the Terminus systems, the Council is willing to offer you reinstatement as a Spectre. What does that mean? Will I need to start filing reports? That won't be necessary. This is a show of good faith on our part. We cannot become involved in an investigation regarding the missing colonies in the Terminus systems, but Spectre reinstatement shows our support of you personally. I accept your offer. Good luck with your investigation, Shepard. We hope for a quick resolution and a quick end to your relationship with Cerberus. Well, that went better than expected. You realize the Council's offer is just symbolic. They won't actually do anything. Even if they don't help, I might as well stay on good terms. True enough. Don't worry about the Council or the Alliance. I'll find some way to keep them off your back. Shouldn't be too hard. As long as you keep to the Terminus systems. Anderson, we need to talk about... Shepard, what are you doing here? Stop by to see how Anderson was doing. You don't have to cover for me. I invited Shepard here to speak with the Council. We just finished our meeting. You what? Consular, do the words political shitstorm mean anything to you? <laughs> I hate this guy so much. The Council reinstated my Spectre status. They're just happy I'm staying out in the Terminus systems. Yes, I could see how that arrangement works best for both sides. But you really shouldn't have taken a step like this without consulting with me first, Consular. I don't answer to you, Udina. Why don't you go to your office and think about that for a while? Of course, Consular. Good day to both of you. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, uh, that was some fun. Boudin has never gotten over the fact that I got the council position instead of him. Sometimes I need to put him in his place. Boudin is just doing his job. True enough. He's got his uses. And if you want something done on the Citadel, he knows who can make it happen. Plus, he's always happy to attend all those formal diplomatic functions I can't be bothered with. Um, that's what came first. What happened to Staff Lieutenant Olenko after the Normandy was destroyed? Staff Commander Olenko is still with the Alliance, but he's working on a special mission. It's classified. I can't say any more. Not while you're working with Cerberus. I'm sorry. Hmm. How long did it take to get this place back up to speed after the battle? Still counting. The main areas of commerce and the most populated wards are complete, but estimates for total restoration are sitting around five years. The Keepers always surprise us, though. It's like our repairs are annoying. We'll put up an ugly new bulkhead, and in a few days, they've made it seamless. We never really thought of them as heavy lifters, and I have no idea where they get the resources, but we'd never get done without them. I'm surprised no one can tell Sovereign isn't Geth technology. Didn't they examine the wreckage? We don't have much to look at. Pieces of it rained all over the station. It was chaos, with who knows how many species combing the wards for their dead. We secured as much of it as we could. But between the keepers and a whole lot of unauthorized salvage, there's no way to account for even half of that thing. Another reason why they don't want to acknowledge what Sovereign was. Yeah, because that's kind of a threat. <clears throat> um... It kind of comes back to the same thing here, right? That um, that acknowledging that Sovereign was a Reaper and that's uh, and all that entails <coughs> uh, means acknowledging to a great degree their incompetence in dealing with the problem. Right? And that's uh, again, uh, you know, people, especially people in power, are not exactly uh, are not exactly uh, prone to or very very uh, very quick to acknowledge their own faults. Uh, Especially publicly, and especially in a in a way that, again, would change the way their relationships work, uh, their relationship to uh, to their subjects in this case work. <laughs> Kylie says everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. Yeah, everything changed when the giant space monsters from beyond the edge of the galaxy attacked. Last I knew, we were still fighting holdouts. They're here and there, but they are increasingly disorganized. It's long since stopped being called a war, more like cleanup. Not that you can ever discount them. But we haven't had serious casualties for months. A civilian ship will spot an enclave and we send in a squad to clear it. They're not quite the boogeymen they used to be. 
How've the last couple years treated you? Serving on the Council isn't how I plan to spend my twilight years. Sometimes it feels like I'm just beating my head against a wall. Knowing the truth about Sovereign is brutal. It's nightmare stuff. I can't blame others for not wanting to believe it, but I know how important it is. So I keep trying. Fighting the good fight, right? Forget Udina and the Council. Join my crew and help me stop the Collectors. I'm too old it's to go ballsy. racing across the galaxy. Much as I complain, I've got an important job <clears> in here. <throat> the front line, that's got to be yours. Yeah, for now. Uh, he does eventually, uh, once again. I don't think this is going to work. He does eventually wind up uh, going more frontline work. Um, and you can tell just from that 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 is absolutely what he wants to do, even though he knows that this is what he needs to do. I better go. Of course, Shepard, I understand. I wish yeah. I could do more to help you. But if you ever want to talk, I'll be here. Just do me a favor and be careful. You can't trust Cerberus. Yeah, that's really true. Uh, also worth noting, I am... Uh, I, 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 one thing that bothers me, another thing that bothers me, a few things bother me about this game, about Mass Effect 2, that I feel like get overlooked, uh, is how um, how small they made the Citadel compared to... See? Compared to what it was in the first game and then what they bring it back to in the third game. Um, this is all... This is the only area you can go to on the Presidium. Is is uh, Anderson's office. That's it. Um, and you can go to the three levels of the of Zakara Ward. The, just the one. Which are basically shops. Uh, and this, which is only for a specific mission. That's it. There, there's almost nowhere in the Citadel you can uh, just sort of go to and wander around. and It, it doesn't feel like an immersive environment, it feels like a level, you know. So let's run through the rest of Zakara Ward. Um, see what all there is. Now available on video, the abridged version of Francis Kitt's award-winning production of Hamlet, featuring oh, yes. an all-Elgore cast. Nostalgic melancholy, Amaz Goryorik, I knew him, Horatio, a fellow of infinite jest, of most excellent fancy. Where be your jibes now? Your gambles, your songs, your flashes of merriment that were wont to set the table on a roar. And don't forget to catch oh Elcor Hamlet live, an unforgettable 14 hour experience. <laughs> sincere endorsement. You have not experienced Shakespeare until you have heard Insincere. Oh my gosh, that's awful. I love it. Uh, I would totally watch that, as as awful as it must be. I would totally watch that. Uh, so, uh, Corey says, Speaking of philosophy, you guys ever thought of reading Revolt Against the Modern World by Evola? Um, I, I don't know. I, um, I have not actually read uh, Evola's book. Um, I'm roughly familiar with a lot of, uh, a lot of the... A lot of the themes and a lot of the topics and a lot of the points presented. I'm, I'm roughly familiar with it. Um, I, I don't know enough to, to, to say one way or another um, uh, whether it, whether you know, whether I generally approve or disapprove, right? So th that sort of thing. Uh, I certainly would be, uh, if, if enough of you guys would be interested in that sort of thing, uh, I can certainly add it to the list of on the, uh, the reading group. Uh, and we can do a read through of that, and we can add commentary to it. I, I can add my commentary bit by bit, um, and and we can sort of talk our way through it and, and do some discussions of it. Uh, so yeah, if that would be if that would be interesting to you guys, to the audience, I could take a look. Um, it is. Uh, it's worth noting. Um, it's a little bit outside of my of my actual area of expertise. Uh, so my commentary would be maybe shallower than. Uh, than some of the other stuff, like the, uh, um, like uh, the Scotus reading that we've already done, and uh, and uh, uh, the Myth of Religious Violence by Kavanaugh that's coming up. Uh, once again, I'm for that. I'm waiting on an ebook because I'd like an ebook to actually read through. Uh, I'm waiting to see if I can get that through uh, through University's library, um, but they're they're 
busy right now, obviously, getting ready for uh, getting ready for uh, uh, online classes and such. So I'm going to see if I can I can get an ebook, secure an ebook of that, and uh, if so, I will we'll get started recording it. Uh, but yeah, um, Evola is a little bit, like I said, outside of my area of expertise, so I don't know exactly how much um, insight I would be able to lend personally, but I'd be happy to, to walk us all through it and do a, uh, do a review. Yeah, I'll see if I can, I'll see if I can get, um, get a hold of a copy and see if, uh, see what I think at least, at least initially. Um, I do like to read through, uh, at least read through once something that I'm going to talk about uh, in depth in a video or in a lecture, that sort of thing, obviously. Uh, even in a reading group like this, I'd like to at least be roughly familiar with what's going on. Um, the two things that I have, uh, the one thing I've planned on doing the reading group for and the one that I'm planning on doing, so Kavanaugh's book and the section from SCOTUS, both of those are things that I've read several times uh, and I'm quite familiar with. I've done in-depth studies of them uh, in, in seminars and things. So. Um, so they're, they're, they're topics that I, I think I, uh, I actually can contribute some insight to. So, uh, so I'll see. Um, Evola might be a good candidate for, uh, for something on that list. Uh, like I said, it's a little outside my wheelhouse, but, um, but it still might be worth doing, especially if you guys are interested. I'm sorry. I'm trying to take a statement here. There's nothing to talk about. She stole my credit shit. Arrest her. I did not! Just because I'm a quarian! I need you to stop and take a deep breath. You're mocking me, <laughs> Earth Clan. Just because the Vault Clan need. It was a poor choice of words, sir. I apologize. Do you know who's telling the truth? My Omni tool can tell the Quarian doesn't have a chit on her. But she could have stashed it to recover later. You know what Quarians are like. <laughs> and she's definitely a vagrant. Oof. I'll run her in and see what Bailey wants to do with her. You say you're falsely accused? I was walking to the used ship dealer when he barged into me outside the Serta Foundation. He didn't stop or say he was sorry. A minute later, he runs up with CSEC and accuses me of stealing his damn chip. You ran into each other outside the Serta Foundation. Is it possible that Chit fell out of his pocket there? I guess. Sure, all I know is I didn't take it. Do you spend a lot of time at the used ship dealer? Yeah, they've got a lot of nice models. I'd like to buy one and take it back to the fleet, but... A ship would make a great pilgrimage gift. You know about the pilgrimage? I traveled with Quarian, who was on hers. I... Wow. I didn't know anyone here would do that for one of us. You say she stole your credit shit? She must have. When I left the Serta Foundation store, she ran right into me. Are you sure you didn't leave your chit at the Serta Foundation? Of course not. You think I'd make a mistake like that? I didn't even buy anything there. That chit stayed in my pocket. How does running into you mean she stole your credit chit? That's how pickpockets work. They bump into you and use that as a cover for rifling your pockets. You can't turn your back on these clanless quarians. Thieves. All of them. I'll see if I can find out what happened. Ma'am, this is a C-Sec matter. We'll do all we can. All we can to resolve this. We don't need civilian help. If you do happen to find the chit, please let one of our officers know. Ah, uh, I can't just pull rank on him yet. Let's go. Mm. Be careful out there. All right, I better go find it then. Pull rank on the bastard. Um. Oh hey, he's I just got a refund in exchange, and I was told to pick up a new army jail converter here. I don't think you have the right place. No, they said to go to the warehouse. This is the warehouse. That, that guy is relevant. Uh, you might remember him from the first game. Uh, if you do, go ahead and let me know. Uh, yeah, that guy was in the first game. Uh, we ran into him for a while. Look, it took me a long time to get this refund. It's a Cision Omnigel Converter. He said there'd be one waiting for me. Do you have a service order? No, I got the refund, made the exchange, and then he said go to the warehouse. 
I love that this was two years ago. Did I better remember this? Because this is, uh, I absolutely love this. All right, so Serta Foundation. Here we go. Good day, citizen. Welcome to the Serta Foundation outlet on Zakir Award. Abolus was in here not too long ago. Did he drop a credit chip? And not that I saw. He didn't purchase anything. Uh, okay. Um... Tell me about your store. The Serta Foundation is a human organization known for its genetic therapy regimens and genetically engineered products. Serta is probably best known for the development of Metagel. Development of Metagel? Wow, that's... Does that... I'm not actually sure. Does that imply that Metagel was invented by a human organization? Like, within the last couple decades? That seems absurd. But, okay, cool. Go humanity, I guess. I couldn't help but notice your prices. They seem a bit steep. I mean, what it could expect? be that, that the you foundation know, is not concerned developments with in this is a this portion of our of sales medicine, funds research to cure genetic diseases. You know, it would make your services more popular. An endorsement from the woman who defeated Saren. Oh my! You're a shepherd, aren't you? I would be glad to give you my employee discount if you would do that for us. It's a deal. Just speak into my console here. I'm Commander Shepard, and this is my favorite store on the Citadel. I'll work it into our advertising at once. Thank you. Neat. Two favorite stores and counting. Um, yeah, that's actually really good. Um, this is better. Uh, do I have enough? Oh, yeah, I have 300,000. Yeah, I'm fine. I can buy all of this. This looks interesting. Heck yeah. What do you think, Michael? Maybe the immuno booster? It's supposed to help with alien oh, bacteria. Them. We can get whatever you'd like for little Jake, Rebecca. Wait, the immuno booster can delay muscle development in high gravity environments. What if that hurts him? Remember them? More, uh, more recurring random side NPCs for Mass Effect 1. Alright, let's check out Marab's Mancha. Welcome to Sarenus Applications. Can I interest you? Ah, Shepard! Do I know you? No, but I know you. Even a senile Hanar would remember the human who fought off the Geth. I thought you were dead. Yeah, I've been getting that a lot. Please, look around the store. It's a pleasure to have you here. You know, I use quite a bit of software in my line of work. It's a shame so few understand their own equipment. Besides the most obvious point-and-go nav interfaces, anyway. You wouldn't believe how often I hear, Why is the ship turning around? We're only halfway there. <laughs> oh, I would. You know, I like your products. Any interest in an endorsement from the human who defeated Saren? I'd be thrilled. But I don't think I could afford to pay you for it. Don't worry about it. What if we just worked out a discount? Absolutely. Just speaking to my console here. I'm Commander Shepard, and this is my favorite store in the Citadel. That will be splendid. I can edit that and have it working right away. Thank you so much. Yeah. This one actually might be my favorite store in the Citadel. I, I like this guy. Ah, my favorite customer. What can I get you? A Volus was in here not too long ago. Did he drop a credit chip? Oh, yes. He bought some environmental system drivers, then left without his chip. I didn't notice he'd left until he was already gone. If you see him, tell him I have it here behind the counter. Nice. Thanks for your time. I'll be here if you need anything. Alright, uh, yeah, I need that. I need both of these. Let's buy them, because I have an absurd amount of money. Alright, so we found his credit chip. And it definitely was not stolen by the, uh, by the Quarian. Her hand go into my pocket. When I checked, my credit chit was gone. I wonder if he's I lying or just paranoid. You. Please move along. You forgot your credit chit at Saranus Applications. The clerk's holding it for you. Oh. Well. The Quarian could have stolen it. I'll close his event report, but I'll be watching you. Get a permanent residence, or I'll run you in for vagrancy. Are you too serious? What? 
You falsely accused this girl of stealing from you. All you have to say now is that she could have stolen it. Now, just a minute. And you. She gets harassed and insulted by this guy, and you throw in a threat to arrest her for vagrancy. How about if I run you in for obstruction of justice? You think you're gonna run in a specter? I think both of you should get out of here. Oh, son of a... <laughs> Glad she waited to pull rank. That was the perfect time. I wish I could give you something more than words. Can you take care of yourself from here? I guess. I mean, most nights I eat nutrient paste in a Turian shelter. But I'm surviving. Thanks. Well, all right. So she's doing okay. Hey, uh, here's the you ship dealer, which we don't really need. I'm not buying any spaceships. The Destiny Ascension has completed its 20 colony victory cruise. Oh, yeah, Council we already heard that. Right, we're already up here. We have another of our favorite stores on the Citadel right over here. I heard that those lakes up on the Presidium are filled with fish. No, they're not. You ever been up there? No. CSEC won't let me. They say I'm a risk. Uh, they think every Krogan is dangerous. Damn Turians. We should kill them all. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, the reputation has to come from somewhere. Alright. What about this guy? What can I do for you? Tell me about your services. We sell quality hunting supplies, which you'll need when you purchase one of our adventure travel packages. Imagine it, human. The break of day. You and your team have been stalking a Shafa for five days. In that time, it's killed four men. You see it? Line it up. Take the shot. Blam! It's down. You're the hero. That's what we offer. Not a vacation. But an experience. Neat. I thought weapons were restricted on the Citadel now. Carrying them around is. Selling them isn't. We store them in off-site containers and deliver them to your ship. People who have permission to carry, like CSEC, can walk out with them. Like me. Um, as a specter. All right. Let's, uh, let's add another favorite. Your expeditions shop might on be a Citadel. little tame for me. Tame. A human can hardly take down a feral Varen, let alone a Shatha. Who do you think you are? Well, my name's Shepard, and I... The Shepard? The one that put down Saren Arterius? Oh, you do know me. By the spirits. Shepard, in my store. I don't suppose I could convince you to record an advertisement for me. Sure you could. Can we work out a discount? A discount? I'd name my firstborn after you if you ask. Can we record it now? Just speak towards my console. I'm Commander Shepard. And this is my favorite store on the Citadel. <laughs> no other gun shop has that kind of endorsement. Technically true. Um, yeah, that's. Uh, I do need that. So, ooh, fifty thousand. Let's see. I need both of those. Yeah, I need these two. This should come in handy. Okay, that was loud. Right into the mic there, Shepard. All right, uh, these are really cheap. I um, don't need that. Maybe? Yeah, they're cheap. I'll get them. I'm going to wait for the sniper rifle damage until I actually have somebody who has who uses sniper rifles. Story, Shepard. Oh, you again. Kalisa have been seen in Al Jalani, Westerland News. I interviewed you two years ago when you first became a Spectre. 
You presented your case very well on camera. Do you have a minute? What, so you can try to do another smear job on me? Now, Shepard, you may object to my methods, but we're on the same side. Your bath, your news. I just want to give your story its due. Sources claim you were at the heart of the Presidium during the Battle of the Citadel. It's fair to say the course of the battle hinged on your words. If true, you told Admiral Hackett to assist the Destiny Ascension, costing hundreds of human lives, and securing the continued dominance of the Citadel Council. Nice of Jacob to kind of get out of frame there, given that he is a uh, member of Cerberus. Again, to remind everybody, a known terrorist group with the logo of that known terrorist group on his shoulder pad. Good idea, getting off of the news here. The Torians lost 20 cruisers. Figure each had a crew of around 300. The Ascension, the Asari dreadnought we saved, had a crew of nearly 10,000. But surely the human cost. The Alliance lost eight cruisers. Shen Yang, Emden, Jakarta, Cairo, Seoul, Cape Town, Warsaw, Madrid, and yes, I remember them all. Everyone in the Fifth Fleet is a hero. The Alliance owes them all medals. The Council owes them a lot more than that. And so do you. Nice. Commander Shepard, first human specter. Hero of the Battle of the Citadel. Check bid. We get it? Great. Bull rushed on my own show. Yeah, that was way better than punching her, which is the, uh, the interrupt option there. Way better than punching her. That was wonderful. Um... I mentioned this last week. Uh, you'll notice that the all eight cruiser names are names of Earth cities. Uh, like I said, this is the Alliance Convention, and I love the depth that they put into just making uh, making it clear uh, that the extra little bit of world building adds some depth to, uh, to everything that's going on, so we can see that, that this the systems alliance, the human military, feels like a real thing. This music is super loud because we are in a club and that's how clubs work and that's why I don't frequent clubs. Let's see what Miranda has to say about things. Yes? Looking for a little R&R, &R, Shepard? It's a nice enough place. It's a lot nicer than Cora's Den anyway. I wasn't sorry to hear they never reopened after the get attack. I really do feel like I just actually walked into a club because I am... I'm shouting the moment I come in here so that the person I'm talking to, you, the audience, can actually hear me. Uh, this is annoying. But let's, uh, let's, let's dance and see Shepard's awful moves. Apparently, bartenders being talkative is a human thing. Great. The strongest thing you have. Easy enough. This is. It's green. Guaranteed to not get on your ass. Unless you're Dexter and DNA like me. If you are, we'll kill you. Check out the Demile flowers across from the condo. They're coming in very nice. 
Alright, let's get out of here. Um, Corey recommends that I do a video on, um, on Evola's, um, uh, what is it, Revolt Against the Modern World? Yeah, Revolt Against Have the Modern World. Have you tried Galaxy of um, Fantasy yet? Uh, I love that game. It's based on Turian mythology, okay. but it's really fun. I hear it has 11 billion players now. Hey, look, it's the, yeah, uh, it's like the Raid trading? Shadow Legends guy. You get two credits toward a new game. <laughs> oh, that's... This is so meta, I love it. You know what's good? Alliance Corsair. The battles are pretty realistic, but it's still fun. And you can install it on an Omni tool. So he's talking about MMOs, he's talking about mobile games, he's talking about bad trade-ins. This is the video game. All of the video game tropes from, when was this, 2011 or 12? That are still pretty active, but... Um, still pretty relevant. It's still relevant, guys. Um, Alright, so let's head back to the ship, because that's about all... Oh, no, 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 we have to, uh, we have to disappoint the Krogan. What do you want? I talked to one of the Presidium groundskeepers. He said there aren't any fish in the lakes. What? I told you. Why have all that water if you're not going to store something to eat in it? I don't understand aliens at all. Thanks for telling me. It's all he's talked about all damn day. Hmm. Uh, Alright, so, anyway. Uh, so as I was saying, uh, I will, um, I'll see if I can give it a read. I'll see if I can get a hold of the copy and, uh, and give it a read, or at least, uh, at least, uh, read through parts of it. Um, and like I said, though, from what I know, it's a little bit, uh, like I said, it's a little bit outside of my wheelhouse. So I'm not sure, um, what kinds of insights I can lend in an actual dedicated video. Um, but we'll see. I might, uh, I might have something to say. I do it well. Um. That said, I am doing a little bit of uh, more focusing on, uh, on, first of all, stuff related to the streams. So, uh, I've, like I said, I have a video on uh, on uh, Cerberus and kind of uh, modern secular humanism as a kind of racism that is akin to Cerberus, kind of comparing the elusive man and Bill Nye, that 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 sort of thing that I've talked about before. Uh, so I got that planned, and of course I have some actual course lecture stuff planned. Um, to integrate with my actual classes, uh, especially due to the online-offline kind of hybrid program that we're uh, we're trying to get uh, working uh, this semester with the whole pandemic thing. So uh, it would if if I am going to do a video on 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 Evola, it would be well first of all after I've read it, obviously. Um, but then it might be uh, it might be down the line a little bit, but we'll see. Um, I'm not. Uh, I'm not immediately, immediately against it. But I do think that uh, uh, we'll see. I I, um, I I have yet to find out because I don't. Again, like I said, I'm not super familiar with it. Uh, yeah, I haven't read it. Uh, but uh, if I do find that it is, um, it's something that I can you know meaningfully comment on, uh, then I'd be happy to do so. Commander, you've received um, a new message at your private terminal. That said, if it isn't really, uh, if it is a. Uh, if I don't have anything uh, particularly insightful or particularly novel to say about it, um, I'm not sure if it would be worth uh, worth just sort of, you know, clogging the airwaves with 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 my banal takes on something I'm not an expert on, you know. Uh, but we'll see. Oh, from Samesh Bhatia. Uh, this was the uh, the guy whose uh, whose wife died on Eden Prime, way near the beginning of Mass Effect One. Commander Shepard, Mr. Rudina offered uh, offered to pass on a message for me. I wish to uh, to again express my thanks for your assistance in retrieving my wife's body. While nothing can ever banish the pain of losing Nirelli, being able to see that her body was treated properly helped me more than you can imagine. Uh, I've opened the restaurant that my wife always wished to start back on Earth. Nirelli's picture hangs on the wall. The Alliance soldiers eat for free. Uh, it's the least I can do to honor the courage with both, uh, which both you and my wife served humanity. Sincerely, Samesh Bhatia. Nice. I I really love the um, the amount of uh, the amount of care paid to the to the little follow throughs uh, in this game uh, in this game series. Really, uh, Bioware is always phenomenal about that. Um, you just vest. What is the difference? Power damage. Yeah, definitely keep power damage. Um, 
ammo or health. Let's see with ammo. And that is health or shields. Let's go with shields. Cool. All set. Uh, we need to go to Dr. Chakwas. Got her brandy. How may I help you, Commander? I have a present for you, Doc. Sarah's ice brandy? You didn't. <laughs> Thank you. I always regretted not opening that original bottle. When I still could, I won't make the same mistake again. Why don't we open this bottle right here, right now, you and me? You crack open the bottle, I'll get the glasses. <laughs> I thought Olenko's biotic display might have broken Jenkins' back, but Jenkins pops up and yells, that was awesome! <laughs> oh, Jenkins. Soldiers like him make the Alliance Great. Cerberus lacks the same enthusiasm. With your service record, you could have gotten a tour of duty on any Alliance ship. Why'd you really leave? Maybe it's less about leaving and more about staying. As a military doctor, I mostly treat people who are in bad shape. Often they die. And if I can help them, they move on. Either way, they leave. Don't you have any friends or family? No, not lacking friendship. Just stability. Jeff, Joker will always have Vrolic Syndrome. He would never admit it, but he needs my help, and he always will. I wish it weren't, but sadly, it's true. To the people we care for, May we never take them for granted. We go this way. That's a big bottle, apparently. I think we finished it. Okay. Uh, all right, let's go fly the ship. It's a good thing to do right now, right? I will say I like no the I like the the the, the, uh, the wobbly drunk effect, uh, but I still uh, my favorite uh, drunk experience in a video game is is uh, by far the. Uh, the looking for Lenny sequence in Red Dead Redemption 2. That is, that is amazing. Uh, that was on my second Red Dead stream. If you want to go back, uh, it was it was right near the end of our I think the second stream. It was amazing. I absolutely love it. Um, let's go to Omega. So now let's go and recruit Archangel. Actually, you know what? Hold on. Hold on. Something is odd. Uh, my, my DLC is not showing up. I'm going to have to fix that between streams, I guess. Um, the, the installation had to be weird because of how I didn't have to get it, but uh, it shouldn't be a problem. Um, let me just... Uh, I, will, I will... Like I said, I'll fix this between the streams. A couple, of, uh, a couple of DLC things should be showing up right now. Uh, they're not. Like, familiar recruiting Zaid should happen right here. Um, so 
So we'll see. Um, I may have to fix something um, before next week. It shouldn't be a problem. It's not a big deal. We can still go and do uh, what we were going to do tonight. Uh, we still have also a lot of exploring to do on Omega. Uh, Omega, aside from um, the actual mission and aside from... Um, uh, aside from uh, recruiting uh, Archangel, let's say who Archangel was. Ah, welcome to Omega. You're new here, aren't you? I can always tell. Allow me to. Oh, hello, Mocklin. I was just. Leave Fargot now. Oh, of course, Mocklin. Whatever she wants. Blasted scavengers, welcome to Omega, Shepard. You know who I am? Of course. We had you tagged the moment you entered the Terminus systems. You're not as subtle as you think. Arya wants to know what brings a dead Spectre to Omega. I suggest you go to Afterlife now and present yourself. Cut the attitude. I'm not here to cause problems for Omega. Things explode around you, Shepard. You can't blame Arya for keeping an eye on you. Afterlife, now. I'm receiving quarantine warnings about the slums where Dr. Morton Solis runs the clinic. Anticipate resistance at the transport station. I have also accessed messages between mercenary groups regarding plans to deal with the Archangel. There's a recruiting station at Afterlife that may have information on him. Okay. Because, yeah, this should be where you recruit Saeed, which is odd. Um... Well, I'll fix that, but I can. Omega, what a pisshole. At least it keeps you on your toes. I've had to come here on business before. I feel like I need a shower afterward, in addition to normal decontamination. Come on, let me in. Ari's expecting me. Yeah, it is expecting me. That. for weapons, you're not doing a very good job. Can't be too careful with dead specters. That could be anyone wearing your face. I was told you're the person to talk to if I have questions. They're clean. Depends on the questions. You run Omega? <laughs> I am Omega. But you need more. Everyone needs more something, and they all come to me. I'm the boss, CEO, queen, if you're feeling dramatic. It doesn't matter. Omega has no titled ruler and only one ruler. Don't fuck with Arya. Sounds like neither of us likes being jerked around. And on your ship, that would matter. Here, we entertain my preferences. Max says, I recruit Archangel first and bring him to the plague zone. I don't do that. So, I usually bring Zayi. What can I do for you? One scan and we're straight to business. People are usually more concerned about who I am. Your death was downplayed, but hardly what I call a secret to make sure it was really you. You could have been anyone, anything. Whatever you need will come out on its own. I'm curious, but Omega doesn't really care about you. Uh, Erica says, too bad we never got to Omega in our tabletop game. There were some interesting things that could have happened. Absolutely. Um, yeah, we definitely had uh, some characters with some history with some criminals that would 
have been definitely useful. Rally would have been great there. Uh, and then also some of, their, some of our uh, associated NPCs have some history with Arya. Um, some negative history with Arya, so that would have been a lot of fun, deciding to decide with that sort of thing. Uh, what about you? Tell me how you got set up here. Oh, and then of course there's the, the Reaper monster things. I have many friends and enemies I keep at varying distances. I don't count you along either. We'll see how useful you prove. Short answer, mind your own damn business. Yeah, so you right. must know what's what on Omega. Everything that's worth knowing. I don't usually give it out freely. Information is power. Mundane things you can find yourself. Take a walk in a back alley or buy one of the mercs a drink. Better yet, talk to the entertainers. They give great tours. Just don't waste my time. I'm trying to track down Archangel. You and half of Omega. You want him dead too? Why is everyone after him? He thinks he's fighting on the side of good. There is no good side to Omega. Everything he does pisses someone off. It's catching up to him. Just the kind of guy I'm looking for. Really? Well, aren't you interesting? You're gonna make some enemies teaming up with Archangel. That's assuming you can get to him. He's in a bit of trouble. Oh yes, that will be a fun character in X Rusum from Omega. That'll be that'll be a lot of fun. What kind of trouble? The local Merc groups have joined forces to take him down. They've got him cornered, but it sounds like they're having trouble finishing him off. They've started hiring anybody with a gun to help. Sounds like that might be our ticket in. They're using a private room for recruiting. Just over there. I'm sure they'll sign you up. What can you tell me about Archangel? Not as much as I'd like. He showed up here several months ago and started causing all sorts of problems. If you make your own laws, which everyone here does, he makes life difficult. He's reckless and idealistic, but he seems to know enough to stay clear of me. Which Merc groups are after Archangel? Blue Suns, Eclipse, Blood Pack. They're Omega's major players. Unless they're at war, you'll never see them together. But one thing they hate more than each other is Archangel. Do you hate Archangel? I don't have time for hate, but I distrust them all equally. For now, I'm happy just to let them kill each other. I appreciate the help. See if you still feel that way when the mercs realize you're here to help them. I'm looking for Morden Solus. Do you know where I can find him? The Solarian Doctor. Last I heard, he was trying to help plague victims in the quarantine zone. I always liked Morden. He's as likely to heal you as he is to shoot you. What can you tell me about him? Used to be part of the Solarian Special Tasks group. He's brilliant and dangerous. Just don't get him talking. He never shuts up. If you really need to find him, take a shuttle to the quarantine zone. No guarantee they'll let you in, of course. Also like that the third game totally implies that that Arya and Morden had sex. Thanks for the information. Yes. It was implied. Just try not, not to confirmed. bring the plague back with you. It was implied. All right, so let's uh, let's check out this recruiting station for going after our people. Let's do that first. I hear you're recruiting. Hmm. Why don't you step inside? You'll get paid and the job's done, just like everyone else. Who's next? Well, aren't you sweet? You're in the wrong place, honey. Stripper's quarters are that way. Show me yours, tough guy. I bet mine's bigger. Impressive. So, you're here to fight, then? It's a, actually a kind of small gun, but whatever. Sure, if this is the place to go after Archangel. This is the place. Standard fee is 500 credits each. You get paid when the job's done. If you die, your friends don't collect your share. You'll need your own weapons and armor. Looks like you got that covered. And no, this does not make you a member of the Blue Suns Eclipse of the Blood Pack. You are a freelancer, period. Any questions? What do we do once we're there? How do we get to Archangel? The Mercs will tell you when you get there. Last I heard, they were putting the freelancers into scouting groups. They attack in waves to distract Archangel while we try to get past his defenses. So we're just fodder for his bullets? If you don't like it, don't sign up. But if you do your job right, it 
it's easy credits. Besides, what are the odds he can kill all of you? <laughs> Why are the mercs working together to take down Archangel? I haven't been on Omega long, huh? He does everything he can to screw with us. Shipments go missing. Operations are compromised. Every month it gets worse. Derek and the other bosses are tired of losing credits. And men. Is he a heavy hitter? How many Merc bosses are involved in this attack? Yeah. Derek runs the Blue Suns, but all three bosses are overseeing the operation. Jared's leading the Eclipse and guards the head of the Blood Pack. Derek's in charge, but the others would never say that. I'm surprised they're in on this at all, but I guess getting rid of Archangel is worth it. Uh... Where's the attack taking place? Archangel's base of operations. He's been hiding right under our noses. I can't tell you exactly where you're going, but we'll get you there. Where do we go? Just head over to the transport depot outside the club. One of our boys will take you from there. Sign in the next one. Hey, is this where I sign up? You look a little young to be freelancing as a merc. I'm old enough. I grew up on Omega. I know how to use a gun. So does Archangel. I can handle myself. Besides, I just spent 50 credits on this pistol and I want to use it. Get your money back. Hey, what are you... Trust me, kid. You'll thank me later. Okay, well... So we have, uh, we've got a, we've got a bizarre situation here where we have, uh, the only thing that seems to unite, um, these sorts of people, people who are, uh, criminals generally, but, uh, people who are hostile not only Come to on, the law, but to each other, which is sort of the natural state of these sorts of things, uh, the only thing that can unite them is a significant threat to everyone, which here is represented. Uh, so a kind of uh, honor among, it's not exactly honor among thieves, it kind of looks like honor among thieves, but it really winds up being something like a, uh, um, a mutual aid compact, if you want, uh, against a greater outside threat, uh, which, as we see going through here, is incredibly, incredibly tentative. Uh, none of them are enthused about working I'm with on each the other. Mission. I hope you're ready. Archangel's been annihilating you freelancers. Uh, actually, let me go and Give me some time. Sure. run through the shops really quick first, see if there's any weapons or armor or anything I need to grab. Oh, it's slightly fast. Very slightly fast. So I'm going to go do all that first real quick. It shouldn't take long. Not going to do any of the side quests over here yet. I'm going to wait until after uh, after the mission. I uh, want to make sure we have time to uh, finish the whole thing. It is the shorter of the two, so it should be fine. Um, I'm going to need. Ooh, actually, yes, that one. I would need to go back to... For that stuff, I would need to go back to the ship to... Re, to refiddle. So, oh, look. Yeah. Weird alien party. Neat. Um, so I'm not going to bother with that yet. Uh, until afterwards. I will deal with it afterwards. I don't know a Captain Gavorn. Why would I tell him anything? I trust you. Tell Gavorn we know his tricks. We not kill anyone today. There seem to be a lot of Vorcha on Omega. Go away. Talk too much. Gavorn's thugs get no more. We leave. Good talking to you. No more talk. We know Gavorn's tricks. We leave. Vorchard. Kind of even. Very creepy. Alright, heavy weapon. Ooh, that I can use. 
That I need. Uh, that'll be nice, but I can't get it yet. Um, this will be very useful in this fight, so I'm actually going to get this. Oh, it's this. Alright. That's pretty much all our money, so uh, let's do that. Alright, so let's go after Archangel and then we will do some of these uh, side quests down here. And maybe buy some more stuff. First, like I said, let's uh, actually go do our actual quest. We'll talk to Gavon later. About the uh, weird fortune. Ready now. Ready when you are. Get in. someone who looks like they can actually fight. They tell you what we're up against? The recruiter was a little vague. We wouldn't get many hires if everyone knew the truth. Archangel's holed up in a building at the end of the boulevard over there. He's got superior position, and the only way in is over a very exposed bridge. It's a killing ground. But he's getting tired, making mistakes. We'll have him soon enough. You guys have a plan? A small team is waiting to infiltrate his hideout, but we need to draw Archangel's fire so they can move in. And that's where we come in. Exactly. You'll be on a distraction team. Head straight over the bridge and keep Archangel busy so the infiltration team can sneak in behind him. Sounds like a suicide mission to me. Pretty much, but you look like you can handle it. Head up to the boulevard and get to the third barricade. Talk to Sergeant Kathka. He'll tell you when to go in. So the bridge is the only way to his hideout? Exactly. Archangel collapsed all the underground passageways and sealed the doors to the lower levels. We've got teams digging, but it's taking too long. If they can get the gunship flying again, that'll help. But I'm hoping the infiltration team will finish the job and we can all go home. They were using a gunship to take out one guy? Yeah, and Archangel shut it down. He didn't destroy it, but he knew just where to hit it to disable it. It wasn't even a fair fight. At least not for us. I like this guy. Uh, also, the uh, gunship is definitely going to be a problem. Where's the infiltration team now? On the far side of the bridge near his hideout, but they can't get any closer without being seen. How'd they get that close without being seen? More distractions. Tarek used a gunship to keep Archangel busy. We were able to sneak a few men into his hideout before he took it down, but they're stuck there. We need to keep Archangel focused on the bridge, so he doesn't find them and wipe them out. What do you know about Archangel? I'm the wrong guy to ask. I just do logistics. Tarek and the other Merc bosses have been dealing with him for a while now. But don't be surprised if they're not thrilled about talking to a freelancer. I better go find Sergeant Kathka. Good idea. Watch yourself on the boulevard. Archangel's killed dozens out there already. But we might have a way in. But getting out could be interesting. Let's find him first. Then we'll figure out how to get back. Ooh, so... Uh, so Max is pointing out and uh, talking about a, uh, a potential Mass Effect tabletop game uh, that she's Shepard, thinking of running for a few of us. Um, I am uh, a little, little minor Max side note. Um, I guess sidebar just for, just for us guys. I, uh, I'm... I'm not wholly opposed to helping DM that, at least uh, at least assuming I have the time. Um, it's, I'm just kind of torn between helping DM and uh, As the and first wave goes in, which is always the, the team will attempt to take Archangel by always the difficult choice for every forever DM when you have a chance to play but you actually enjoy DMing. It's actually it's uh, it's, it's it's genuinely a difficult cho uh, difficult choice. Uh, all right, Tarek. I've spoken to Garm, and he and the men are on board. Assuming this operation is successful, we can count on high morale and uh, extensive buy-in from the men. From the losses we've already taken, the possibility exists that we won't have the men needed to continue on to the 
economic subjective. It's clear, though, that none of our organizations will be ready to move on Aria without the existence of the other two, Jareth. So they're going after Aria. I bet, I bet Aria would like to know about that. Do you need something? Can you leave the eclipse? You figure that out by yourself? I'm Jareth. I run Omega's Eclipse. What do you need, freelancer? What do you know about Archangel? His life expectancy is shortening quickly. Is that it? Nobody seems to know anything about him. Look around. You'll learn what you need to know. He's smart, he's resourceful, and he's dangerous. But we've got him cornered. He won't be making fools of us much longer. Can I assist you further? Where did he come from? Who is he? Even his team didn't know that. Maybe we'll know more once we have his body. Of course, it really won't matter then. So the infiltration team is the main focus of the attack. Tarek's plan, not mine. He doesn't want to lose any more men, so he's throwing you freelancers at the problem. Archangel's not going anywhere, so I suppose there's no harm in trying. Who knows? Maybe you'll get lucky. So you're just gonna hide here while the freelancers get killed? Precisely. You're paid to be a distraction. Nothing more. Whether you survive or not is up to you. Why are Eclipse on Omega in the first place? Since you care so much, Eclipse controls almost 20% of Omega. Our transports and mechs keep the ESO moving. It sounds very organized. Eclipse runs like a well-oiled machine, but Omega is anything but organized. It's a constant battle for control. Then Archangel comes along and complicates things even more. Why does Archangel give you so much trouble? Ask him. I'm just here to make as much money as I can. We didn't come to Omega to be constrained by laws and regulations. He'll regret ever coming to Omega, I promise you. Seems like this is personal for you. He raided one of my transports last month, killed two of my best operatives. One of them was my brother, so yes, it's pretty damn personal. Ooh, yeah, all right, well. I'll get going. Good idea. Is that, that's a good reason. All right, what else we got? Um, wait, Ed. This is good. Oh, I have to go through the office. That makes, that makes sense. Alright, let's see here. Ooh. Oops, wrong one. It's uh that one. Who is your uh is your uh is your game going to have uh going to have these silly mini games? Because that'd be fun. I kind of, I honestly kind of miss these. Let's just slow them down. Uh, a little bit. It'll be hostile if they activate it. Yeah. Uh, I kind of miss these little mini games in the third game to get rid of them. Makes it more action y, but at the same time, it's, uh, at the same time, I kind of liked the, uh, the the little change of pace. Doesn't make any sense in the middle of action, in the middle of the actual combat. But, yeah. You're in the wrong place, freelancer. You the blood pack leader? Name's Garn. That's all you need to know. I'm stuck here waiting till you freelancers are done playing war. Ask your questions and go. I oh I was uh, Max. I was mostly kidding. Um. You obviously have to come up with different mechanics for these sorts of things anyway, even if you are going to implement it, just because it's um, on a tabletop, even a virtual tabletop, it's very difficult to implement things like very specific game, me game mechanics like that. I've ran into that problem myself. Um, uh, like, if you remember the drill puzzle from um, from where you recruit Liara in Mass Effect 1, the like directional drill puzzle, I, uh, I implemented a version of that. Um, but I had to do it very differently, so I didn't have the time limit. I basically had it be, had it that uh, you had to do a guessy, guessy Simon Says thing. Eric will, re will remember this because her character almost killed a squad mate. Um, basically, it was that. You did the little puzzle uh, to try and release somebody from a stasis field, uh, like a Prothean stasis field. Uh, but if you got the combination wrong, you had to start over, and also it damaged the person in the stasis field. Like, it started crushing them. 
Uh, so that was your dis disincentive f to uh, to just spam. So yeah, that was fun. But yeah, it's uh, it's a matter of kind of taking taking some aspects and then transitioning and changing other aspects. Um, so what about? What do you know about Archangel? He's a pain in the ass. He's a Turian, which makes him slightly worse to look at than you. And he's brave until he realizes you're more than he bargained for. Sounds like you've had personal experience. He tried to take me down once, waited till I was alone. Longest damn fight of my life, but I held him off till my men showed up. He wasn't so tough after that. We chased him over half of Omega. Almost had him, but the slippery bastard snuck away before we could pin him down. Uh, Max says, by the way, uh, did you know that on Nightmare Mode you have to have Miranda on your team? Because she's the best. In general, or just for this mission? Because I can see why. I mean, she's a Sentinel. Sentinels are fantastic. They have a great mix of uh, biotics and tech. But her weapons are pretty limited. I would think that you would want somebody with uh, a little bit heavier weapons. Um, but yeah, maybe. I don't know. I uh, It's been a long time since I played on Nightmare. Or on... Insanity? Is it Nightmare or Insanity? I thought it was Insanity. Um, oh yeah, the squad boost. That is true. That's actually, yeah, that's a good point. That's very good point. Oh yeah, the former version of uh, the, the character Eric was talking about here. Um, in our previous tabletop game, uh, he was a Merc NPC. Uh, not in great standing with Arya because his crazy ex sort of stole a Cerberus ship from her. So, yeah, that was uh, stole a Cerberus ship from her at uh, the during the Battle of Omega in Mass Effect Three. Just kind of left with it after taking it over. Um, all right, what about the plan? When did the Blood Pack attack? Damn, Tarek wants us to wait. I hate waiting. But he says the Suns have a plan, and they don't want us getting in their way. Huh? We're supposed to wait until the Eclipse and their mechs. We'll see. Yeah, Overload and Warp managed to take, managed to together, uh, take down all of the defense types. So that's actually really good. So yeah, fair point. Why are the Blood Pack on Omega? We're the muscle on this bloody station. You need protection or want someone removed, talk to us. The Blood Pack are everywhere on Omega. Everybody loves us and everybody hates us. I'm guessing Archangel mostly just hates you. He's just an uptight asshole. I don't really care what he thinks, but he's costing me men and making me work for my money. I'll be the one to take him out today, you watch. I'm the only one who's fought him one-on-one. -on -one. You fought him? He tried to take me down once. Waited till I was alone. Longest damn fight of my life. But I held him off till my men showed up. He wasn't so tough after that. We chased him over half of Omega. Almost had him. But the slippery bastard snuck away before we could pin him down. I should get going. About time. I feel like Shepard is undercover, and so she's not saying I should go. Oh, hey. You know, loud gunshots. Huh. 
By the way, Archangel Armor is my favorite dark blue. Uh, I like the Turian point, uh, point back of the helmet. Like, yeah, Archangel's got really cool, really cool armor. This, uh... The version of it in this game is maybe maybe the best. Although I hate that they don't repair it. You never wind up repairing your damage. It seems very silly. But you know. Kafka. Sergeant Kafka. Be the group Salty mentioned. You're just in time. Were you waiting for us? The infiltration team is about to give us a signal. Archangel won't know what hit him. Got any questions? This may be your last chance. So our plan is to jump the wall and head for Archangel's building? And try not to get killed too fast. You're only a distraction, as long as you're alive. You don't have to make it all the way across. Just keep Archangel watching that bridge. The infiltration team will do the rest. How will the infiltration team get to Archangel? They've got two options. They trap him in close quarters and finish the bastard off face to face. If that doesn't work, they have explosives. They'll just need time to set up. So the bridge is the only way in? Until the gunship's working again, or the blaster's finished with the tunnels. Look, we got a plan. We don't need you trying to come up with any great ideas. Just do your damn job, collect your credits, and go home. Are you gonna give us cover with the gunship? Huh. Tarek is the only one who flies her. Besides, she's not quite ready. That bastard Archangel gave her a beating last time she was out there. A few more tweaks, she'll be as good as new. Why are you coordinating the attack and fixing gunships? I'm in the infiltration group. Our team coordinates with the gunship. I'm staying back to organize the freelancers and make sure the gunship's ready to go if we need her. Are you leading the assault? Ha! <laughs> Tarek doesn't pay me to fight. I just plan the attacks and fix the damn gunship. You freelancers get the privilege of... Check. Bravo team! Go, go, go! Archangel's got quite a surprise waiting for him, but that means no more waiting for me. Gotta get her back to 100% before Tarek decides he needs her again. Zaffy time. You're working too hard. <laughs> Doesn't look like Archangel's got much time. Well, let's not wait around too long. Come on, give these guys a surprise of our own. Incoming! Get them! Who's this with Archangel? Uh, uh, uh. Enemy down! Shepard. 
Hey. I thought you were dead. Man, I love this reveal. That was that was like phenomenal first time I played this. Garrus, what are you doing here? Just keeping my skill sharp. A little target practice. You okay? Been better, but it sure is good to see a friendly face. Killing mercs is hard work, especially on my own. You nailed me good a couple times, by the way. Concussive rounds only, no harm done. Didn't want the mercs getting suspicious. Uh-huh. If I wanted to do more than take your shields down, I'd have done it. Besides, you were taking your sweet time. I needed to get you moving. Since when did you start calling yourself Archangel? It's just a name the locals gave me for all my good deeds. <laughs> I don't mind it, but please, it's uh, <clears throat> just Garrus to you. What are you doing out here on Omega? I got fed up with all the bureaucratic crap on the Citadel. Figured I could do more good on my own. At least it's not hard to find criminals here. All I have to do is point my gun and shoot. How'd you manage to piss off every major Merc organization in the Terminus systems? It wasn't easy. I really had to work at it. I am amazed that they teamed up to fight me. They must really hate me. Well, we got here, but I don't think getting out will be as easy. No, it won't. That bridge has saved my life, funneling all those witless idiots into scope. But it works both ways. They'll slaughter us if we try to get out that way. So we just sit here and wait for them to take us out? It's not all that bad. This place has held them off so far. And with three of you, I suggest we hold this location, wait for a crack in their defenses, take our chances. It's not a perfect plan. But it's a plan. How'd you let yourself get into this position? My feelings got in the way of my better judgment. It's a long story. I'll make you a deal. You get me out of here alive, and I'll tell you the whole damn thing. Oh yeah, speaking of his armor, I, I really love the T-Visor. Which he's not wearing, because he doesn't have his helmet on, but I love the T-Visor. It, it fits the Turian, uh, the Turian aesthetic and the Turian look uh, so well. Plus, I love T visors. I guess it's because of Boba Fett, but you know, whatever. Still love it. If we fight as a team, we'll hold them off. You're right. Their numbers won't help them in here anyway. Let's see what they're up to. Hmm. Looks like they know their infiltration team failed. Take a look. Scouts. Eclipse, I think. Scouts. One less now, though. Indeed. We better get ready. I'll stay up here. I can do a lot of damage from this vantage point. You? You can do what you do best. Just like old times, Shepard. Let's give these bastards everything we've got. We compromise! <laughs>
I've got him. This is... Take care of itself. Is there anything else to collect in here? I forget. I think there is, but... Contrary to what Garrus has to say, I don't think there is any kind of time limit here at all, so we're free to just wander around and, uh, you know, do the normal collecting things. Um, I do enjoy how, uh, how it's kind of implied, they make it sound like, um, like the entirety of this is uh, is the, the mercenary groups are now going to start working together, uh, actually coordinating their efforts rather than just kind of going after them one after the other, um, and that doing so would be extraordinarily effective, like dangerously effective against Garrus, uh, Archangel as they know him. Um, but of course, because they are oh yeah, here are his former squad mates. That's not good. Um, that's rough. We'll, we'll talk about them later with uh, with Garrus. Um, yeah, it would be incredibly effective for them to actually work together and go after him as a unit. Um, but of course, they hate each other more than they hate Archangel, despite their attempts to work together to go after him. Uh, and that is a huge advantage uh, for us. Uh, that they are not exactly willing to fully cooperate. If they were, this would be a lot harder. You're kicking ass, Shepard. They barely touched me, and we got Jareth in the process. It's the trouble with unjust people. For months. Um, yeah, unjust people are not prone to work together because they are... Uh, they're... Because of their lack of virtue, their selves are not properly integrated, and so that means that they are incapable of working with other people. Um, the best analogy for it is that they don't fit together properly. Right? So they, so just people are particularly good at cooperation because they have the same ultimate goals in mind. 
uh, right? So each, uh, each just person is pursuing justice. So it's actually very easy for just people to work together uh, towards that common goal. By contrast, though, unjust people, particularly selfish people, self-centered people, uh, find it very, very difficult to work together because each is pursuing their own benefit at the expense of others. Uh, rather than trying to, you know, secure mutually beneficial agreement uh, arrangements, right? Um, for example, Jareth benefiting either of the other two Merc leaders would be contrary to his interests, even if it would, you know, even if it would help the uh, the uh, Eclipse, uh, even if it would help the Eclipse mercenaries to work with uh, the Blue Suns, the Blood Pack. Right. By benefiting the Blue Suns and the Blood Pack, that ultimately undermines the position of the Eclipse because they're fundamentally opposed to one another. So that limits the ability for them to actually cooperate. Right? We, 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 we see this process both in fiction and in real history and throughout philosophy. This dates back to at least, uh, at least Plato. Plato pointed out the, the trouble or possibly, or maybe even impossibility of unjust people truly cooperating two and a half thousand years ago. And I think he was absolutely right about that. The, 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 we can see this, we can see this uh, play out uh, in, in cases like this, whether real or imagined. Why were you after him? He's been shipping tainted Ezo all over Citadel space. Half the goods I seized back at CSEC came from his team here on Omega. I took out a big shipment a while back and killed his top lieutenant in the process. Not surprised he decided to work with the other mercs after that. We still got blood pack and blue suns left. Think we can make a break for it? Maybe. Let's see what they're up to. They've reinforced the other side heavily, but they're not coming over the bridge yet. What are they waiting for? What the hell was that? Damn it. They breached the lower level. Well, they had to use their brains eventually. You'd better get down there, Shepard. I'll keep the bridge clear. Let's split up two and two. Keep one of my team here. You sure? Who knows what you'll find down there? Um, Miranda should come with me because I'm gonna need warp hard. Although, incendiary ammo does the same job. It prevents regeneration because regeneration is the real problem. And a shotgun's really helpful down there. Eh. And most of them have armor, not shield. So yeah, let's uh, let's let's bring Jacob. Miranda, stay with Garrus. Keep him alive. Thanks, Shepard. You better get going. We're on our way. Go down a level. The basement door is on the west side of the main room behind the stairs. I'll radio directions if you need help. But you've got to get down there quick. Good luck. I love the camera movement. How it's legitimately like it's like it is actually a camera and that it is moving. It's so um, it's like the game has cinematography, and, uh, and I mean that in the in the film sense. It's really nicely done. Uh, oh, hey, no, that doesn't matter.
I never do particularly well at this part. I'm trying to uh, trying to keep an eye on uh, making sure chat has an update as well. So anyway, um, oops, I looked away for a second too long. Darn it. Okay, well, I just need to hold back a little bit. Sadly, I have less to, uh, I have a little bit less to say about this, uh, about this mission, uh, than I do with the other one. Um, there are certainly some... Oh, well, okay, I got credits for it. Something. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, like I was saying, I have a little bit less to say about this one than I have to say about the other one. Um, because the other mission is, like I said, is a little bit more topical to the moment. Enemy 
Oh. <laughs> I am really out of ammo. Okay. Okay. Um. They've stopped. Come find me. Okay. I need more ammo. Oh my gosh. Alright, I think that's it. Oh, another dead squad mate, I didn't realize. We okay. came from here, come see me. Thanks, Shepard. They hardly got through to me. And we took out Garm and his blood pack. This day just gets better and better. He was one tough son of a bitch. You fought with him before? Yeah, we tangled once. Caught him alone, none of his gang, to help him. I still couldn't take him out. I've never seen a Krogan regen that fast. He's a freak of nature. He just kept at it until his Vorcha showed up. It was close, but I had to let him go. Not this time. Uh, so, the uh, the thing about the Vorcha... Um, <clears throat> one of the things I wanted to mention about the Vorcha uh, is that they weren't in the first game at all. They weren't even mentioned in the first game at all. Uh, and I think the interest, the thing about that that interests me is that they don't feel bizarre or strange or out of place. They feel like they've kind of they they kind of feel like they've been here all along. Like even when I started playing this, it felt like oh yeah, this is the kind of alien that would be in a slimy underbelly working with Krogan and a gang of mercenaries. Yeah, um, really creepy. Lots of regen. Not very intelligent. Pack mentality. In a gang called the Blood Pack. Right? All of this just sort of gets integrated into the world uh, in a very organic sort of way, and that is some of the best uh, world building uh, that that you see in a lot of uh, uh, in a lot of franchises. And it's what I absolutely love about Mass Effect. And what makes it um, what makes it one of my best, one of my favorite um, uh, favorite what? I would say, I guess, sci-fi properties, but maybe even just, like, world settings? One of my favorite world settings, just because of how, um, how integrated so much of the world building is, and how, uh, how in-depth everything feels. Uh, there's, there's very little that breaks your immersion, that rips you out of the, uh, out of the, sort of, enchantment of the world. Um, and there's even very, there's very little that, uh, that, that, uh, that breaks previous continuity, and this is, I think, one of the uh, one of the big issues that. Um, well, I think this really combines two of the big issues that I think uh, Star Wars has been dealing with, because I'm, I've always been a huge Star Wars fan. Um, and with a lot of the new stuff, it has been uh, there's there are all sorts of issues coming out with the world being relatively small, feeling very, relatively small. It's not adding new large scale things. Um, it's not uh, integrating as well into the into the the previous sort of war, if you will. Uh, and then also, it's it's bringing up new things that wind up uh, giving rise to problems with old things, like the the infamous hyperspace ram and all that kind of stuff. So, again, it's it goes to show that you can create a world setting like this, which has a, a long storied history that um, that has this kind of depth but still has this room to move within. Like we were talking about um, running a tabletop campaign uh, in the Mass Effect setting, uh, and not just one, this would be the second um, tabletop campaign, possibly even within the same continuity if we wanted to do that. I have no problem with it. Uh, to the point where, yeah, you can have little stories. You can tell extra little stories here and there that, that fit perfectly within everything, that don't disrupt anything, but that you can extrapolate on the world, which is why, I mean, it's why very, very good uh, settings inspire fan fiction. Because there is a gap. There's a gap to exploit, there's a gap to explore that isn't, that isn't, that is, that is both not filled right, by the existing canon, but at the same time, it's not, uh, it's not unimportant. It feels like there could be something there, and that the thing that could be there could be important and could be interesting. And it, it isn't just like, yeah, whatever's happening over there doesn't, doesn't really matter, but here's what matters, right? The main story. That isn't the case here in, uh, in Mass Effect, right? Mass Effect is... The trilogy is Shepard's story. The reason you can do... Well, even the reason you can do something like Mass Effect Andromeda is that this isn't 
the entire story of the entire galaxy, or and now beyond, right? You can have split-off stories, things that happen elsewhere that, that, in retrospect, yeah, it makes perfect sense that somebody heard about this massive threat to the galaxy, the benefactor, if you've played Andromeda, uh, and decided, well, you know what? Let's go explore another galaxy. Let's work on the technology to do it, interspecies effort, and let's just go, just in case this crazy specter is onto something. Uh, and then they did, because of course they did. Why would someone not do that? You know, um, it, it would be a thing that somebody would do, and it would have been a thing that somebody would do, you know, anyway, with this level of technology and this level of society and all of that. It feels like it belongs in the setting. Uh, and that, I think, is the mark of really, really good world building, is that is that you can kind of integrate things into it that make perfect sense, and you know how to do so, right? The, the, the setting itself gives you rules for how to do so sensibly. Uh, same for any of the really well-established D&D settings, like Forgotten Realms is a great example of, the, of doing this. Right? There is, there is so much content and so much history in the Forgotten Realms campaign setting for Dungeons & Dragons. Um, that a campaign set in the Forgotten Realms almost can write itself, just because there's so much stuff that that is there in the background, that all you have to do is throw in a plot hook and a few characters, and you suddenly have a, you suddenly have a story. You know? So, I've done a campaign. I've actually ran a campaign like this, where where I basically just had the players <laughs> write the story of the campaign. Uh, I had a story, but they ignored it, did their own thing, and it turned out to be a good story it turned out to be a good plot and you can do that in a well-established world because everything is already there it's set up it's it's uh it's it's a well-made sandbox if you want anyway that's uh that is some of me rambling about some of the stuff i'm not an expert in but uh that i really enjoy in some of my uh, uh some of my hobby time if you want you know the, my my gaming and uh, uh and um uh, storytelling kind of stuff all right. Shepard, Stephanie, get command. Let's go. Only the blue suns are left. I say we take our chances and fight our way out. I think you're right. Derek's got the toughest group, but nothing we haven't faced before. Besides, he won't be expecting us to meet him head on. And... Look out! Damn it! I thought I took that thing out already. I fixed it, but not completely. I made sure of that. All other groups, watch your back, Shepard. This doesn't mean that I need to reload. I might, unfortunately. Um, okay. Well. Yeah, okay, fine. Oh, no. Uh, 
Alright, that was just two minutes ago, so let's do it. Uh, great. Fine. Okay, well that was interesting. That doesn't sound good. We better hurry. He looks bad. I forgot about the gargle. Oh man, that was that was rough. Also, of course, that's another one of those things that just feels right. Like, of course, Turian blood is blue. Why would it not be? I guess. It just seems like it. It just seems to make sense. Same as Salarians are green, and Asari is bluish, purplish stuff. You know, it, it, the depth of the uh, the world building, again, just kind of shows through like this. It's neat. It's really cool. Alright. Uh, 40,000 credits. Nice. That's an ESO. That's it. Oh yeah, and suddenly uh, weapons have to reload now. Um, yeah, that was another little excuse to make it more like a conventional shooter that I'm not a huge fan of, but you know, Commander, it is what it is. We've done what we could for Garrus, but he took a bad hit. 
The doc's corrected with surgical procedures and some cybernetics. Best we can tell, he'll have full functionality, but... Shepard? <laughs> Tough son of a bitch. Didn't think he'd be up yet. Nobody would give me a mirror. How bad is it? Hell, Garrus, you were always ugly. Slap some face paint on there and no one will even notice. <laughs> oh, oh, don't make me laugh. Damn it, my face is barely holding together as it is. Some women find facial scars attractive. Mind you, most of those women are Krogan. Frankly, I'm more worried about you, Cerberus Shepard. You remember those sick experiments they were doing? That's why I'm glad you're here, Garrus. If I'm walking into hell, I want someone I trust at my side. You realize this plan has me walking into hell, too. Just like old times. I'm fit for duty whenever you need me, Shepard. I'll settle in and see what I can do with the forward batteries. Right. So, let's go and uh, talk to everybody, see how everyone's doing. Commander, can I help you with something? Um, I'm more interested in just talking for a bit. Sounds good. Have to say you run this ship tight, and we're getting things done. We keep on track and maybe we'll figure this out. I hope so. I'm not looking forward to the debrief if it all goes to hell. Is there something specific? Or are you just checking in? I heard you were big in the Alliance. Figured we have something in common. I did some things that caught attention and stirred up the Citadel. That was after the Alliance put me on leave, though. Didn't drive a Mako through a relay or take down a Reaper, but you covered that. What was your proudest career moment? The job I'm proudest of wasn't for the Alliance. Nobody really knows about it. A Batarian group was plotting to release a weaponized virus and kill the Council. Miranda and I stopped it. Strange that it wasn't bigger news. The real work doesn't get publicized, you know that. They say it's better that people don't know how fragile the system is or how close the bad guys can get. So, it never happened. Like you and the Reaper. And that's why I'm here. Yeah, so this ties in with what we were saying earlier, right? That it's, uh, it's very much that, you know, like you said, people don't want to know how fragile the system is, and more so the people in charge don't want people to see how tenuous their grip on things is right? um, because again that's it, it can lead to a sort of crisis of confidence or even a legitimacy crisis right if the, if the citadels if the citadel council is incapable of even keeping the citadel safe then why are they in charge right that's the kind of mentality that this can bring up and that's very very dangerous uh, for people in charge so of course they're not going to they're not going to publicize that kind of thing and they're not going to uh, go around siding with the uh, with somebody like Shepard who is trying to point out that things are starting to go horribly awry uh, when it's much easier for them to just kind of brush it all aside, you know? What led you to Cerberus? The Alliance sidelined me after Eden Prime. Ended up on a job with Miranda that Cerberus treated like an audition. And here I am. You don't seem like a results-at-all-costs kind of guy. Cerberus history doesn't bother you? The Alliance is all politics. Somebody has to take down the bad people. Cerberus keeps that line, I'm on their side. You make no apologies for doing what you had to. I admire that. I couldn't go back to the Alliance, not after the cover-up. They did the same to you. General Public never knew you were dead or heard the real story of the Citadel. Did you know they used you on recruitment ads? You were the human ideal for like six months. Then they replaced you with a composite image they invented. Guess you didn't focus test right. Perfect hmm. example of humanity, and they still dumped you. Jesus. Uh, Kylie says, I'm going to leave a bit early. Uh, love the live stream and will watch the rest when I can. See you all tomorrow in Yeehaw Skyrim. Good night, everyone. Good night, Kylie. I will see you tomorrow. Um, I'm not going to miss too terribly much. We're mostly going to be talking to people and maybe doing a little bit of uh, equipment catching up on Omega. Um, if we got time, maybe a minor side quest or two, but it looks like probably not. It's after 11.30. So, uh, so good night. I'll see you tomorrow. Um, let's keep it's on. nice to know someone like you is thinking about me. Knowing the real story was hard. It felt like, well, maybe this isn't really appropriate, Shepard. Commander, I should get back to my duties. Everything has to be perfect if we're going to survive this. 
You're not blowing me off that easy, Mr. Taylor. Uh, that came off how I didn't want it to, but okay. Um, yeah, I feel like uh, Jacob is kind of the, kind of the, the. Commander, you've received a new message at your private terminal. Oh yeah, okay. the kind of accidentally default romance in in, uh, in Mass Effect Two, especially by uh, by the writers. Uh, it just kind of happens if you're not careful to avoid it. How is our newest Turian crew member doing? His injuries looked painful. He's been through a lot, not just physically. There's something about him. I just want to hold him close and whisper, it will be all right. Are you attracted to other species? Well, part of my job is predicting the motives and feelings of humans and aliens. Intimacy brings understanding. And passion is nice wherever you find it. Character matters, not race or gender. Anything else, Commander? Uh, well, okay then. Is there anything I should know? You have unread messages at your private terminal. Anything else, Commander? That'll be all. It's always nice chatting with you. Alright. Uh, so yeah, let's check that. Unread messages. Oh. Huh. Reports tell us you've been operating in the Omega Nebula. We'd like you to look into a station on Lorik, uh, nearby in the Fathar system. Uh, scan the planet for a base where we believe Eclipse Mercs are holding one of our operatives. You should be able to detect the operative's transmitter. Extract the operative if the operative is beyond rescue. Recover any irrelevant intel that Eclipse may have collected. It was a very delicate matter, Shepard. We trust in your discretion. Okay. We'll do that eventually. Uh, from John Whitson. Hey, Arya gave me this address. I think I met you at Afterlife on Omega. You stopped me from joining up with those Mercs who were trying to take out Archangel. Man, I was so pissed off at you, but I got blind drunk that night, and it was a few days before I got together enough to check the news vids, and saw that almost all those mercs that had gotten killed by Archangel. I don't know who you are, or if you've got out of there alive yourself, but thanks. I felt really stupid when I heard about the body count and how I could have been part of it. I'll make the most of it with the most with what you did for me, John Whitson. Nice, that was the kid who we, uh, we pointed out his gun was broken. Nice. So let's um, uh, let's go see Garrus. Oh, and uh, let's give him give uh, Gardner his ingredients. Commander, those provisions you provided were perfect. I owe you. I've already thrown together some of my calamari gumbo. Here, try a bite. It's based on an Asari recipe. Seems a little cannibalistic to me with their tentacle heads and all, but they ain't no good grub. Anyway, mm. thanks again. You really came through. I don't know. That's kind of like us eating mammals. That's normal, right? I don't know. It's a little odd. It seems creepy to an alien, at least. Aliens like us. Nice. Shepard, need me for something? What can you tell me about the Normandy's armaments? Looks like Cerberus upgraded what the ship carried before. Should have a bit more kick. I still don't like our chances against a collector ship, though. Not unless we upgrade the guns. Have you got a minute? Sure. Just checking the weapon systems. You can never be too careful. I thought I'd seen every weapon in the galaxy in our fight against Saren. Mercenary work showed me otherwise. And now Cerberus rebuilds the Normandy with a few upgrades to boot. I wish we joined up with them sooner. You sure you're okay working with Cerberus? I can't exactly doubt your judgment. Not after I got my own squad killed. What did your Merc squad do? Didn't sound like you were available for hire. You saw Omega. It was full of thugs kicking the helpless. I formed my team to kick back. We weren't mercenaries. At least nobody was paying us. We made money by taking down slavers, pirates, or gangs that went too far. Doesn't sound like you made any friends with the gangs. I got three separate merc bands to work together to take me down. My manager at CSEC would be impressed. It was simple. We'd hit their shipments, disrupt activities, get under their skin, make them angry. They'd come charging right into our well-prepared kill zone, crossfire and snipers, clean and surgical. They never stood a chance. Tell me about your squad. There were 12 of us, including me. Former military operatives, CSEC agents. 
The usual. Had a Solarian explosives expert. Pretty sure he'd spent time in the special tasks group. My tech expert was a Batarian, believe it or not. Not the friendliest guy, but he could hack any system ever built. How'd you end up fighting mercenaries here on Omega? I went back to CSEC after the Normandy was destroyed, but with all the rebuilding at the Citadel, there was too much chaos for me to really help. Omega was filled with criminals nobody else could touch, and there was no red tape to slow me down. That was a perfect fit. People here needed someone to believe in, someone to stand up to the local thugs. It's funny um, how many uh, how many cops who don't play by the book there are in the series, which especially is starting really in two. Um, which really comes back to something I keep saying about Mass Effect 2 is that it really it really plays up the like 80s action hero kind of like action movie aesthetic and, and, and structure um, because that is such a uh, that is such a trope from that time period and that kind of genre of the cop who doesn't play by the rules and gets things done you know that kind of thing um, which even fits Shepard to a degree um, Though a bit differently, maybe uh, a bit separately to um, to the kind of hero of the galaxy motif, which those are kind of competing aspects of of uh, Shepard's personality uh, and her narrative. Uh, that said, of course, they, they do integrate quite well. Um, now, maybe you can say one of them is kind of the Paragon side and one of them is the renegade, renegade side, but I wouldn't quite say so. Uh, I think both Paragon and Renegade, you kind of wind up doing the whole "we're working outside of the rules, not playing by the book, being you know doing what needs to get done" kind of thing. And also, both Paragon and Renegade, you are kind of bringing the galaxy together uh, in order to save it and be the big damn heroes, right? Both of these are happening simultaneously uh, without them being in conflict. It's just Renegade Paragon is the is this is a slight difference in methodology uh, and attitude more than anything else. Um, but yeah, I think that's, that's yeah, I, 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 I can't emphasize enough the, uh, that, the 80s sci-fi and then moving into the sort of 80s action movie kind of, uh, kind of feel for the series, which I dig it. It's great. That explains how you started. How'd you end up with a squad? Not too different from how you formed your squad to fight Saren, actually. You prove that you get things done and people join up. Mercs who wanted to atone. Security consultants tired of playing by the rules. I gave them hope. And now they're dead. Shows what I know. How did those mercenary gangs take down your team? It was my own damn fault. One of my people betrayed me. A Turian named Sidonis. He drew me away just before the mercs attacked my squad. Then he disappeared. Everyone except me is dead because of him. Because I didn't see it coming. I'm not sure I understand. What happened exactly? Sedonis asked for my help on a job. When I got to the meeting point, nobody was there. By the time I got back to our hideout, the mercs had killed all but two of my squad. And they didn't last long. You sure it was a betrayal? Maybe they took Sedonis out first. No. I put out feelers with some old contacts. He booked transport off Omega just before the attack. He also cleared out his private accounts before he left. He sold me out and ran. Do you know where Sedonis is now? No. His trail vanishes after he leaves Omega, but I'll keep hunting. I lost my whole team except for Sedonis. One day I'll find him and correct that. Thanks for coming by, Shepard. I've got some things to take care of. So again, later on, you can really you can help him either Rupert, get revenge or move on from Seems like revenge. you put in more food and oh. less ass. Yeah, yeah, keep talking. Yeah. Um, and it really becomes a turning point for Garrus either way, uh, which uh, again I really like the impact that that Shepard as this kind of leader and this this sort of nurturing nurturing with this um this gathering in like feminine heroine that i keep talking about uh that kind of role uh really plays bo in uh in both ways uh, one way or the other uh for garris and for most of the crew commander i, say about I very garris. much enjoyed sharing that ice brandy with you oh, yeah but i hope i wasn't too unprofessional brandy goes straight to my head 
It's nice to see you let your hair down. Guess I hadn't realized how much those feelings needed airing. But I didn't give you much of a chance to vent. So tell me now. What do you think? Everyone's depending on us. We won't let them down. They just don't make them like you anymore, Shepard. Well, promise me we'll share a bottle every year. The next one is on me. Um, Bagaris. How may I help you, Commander? Uh -huh. I'll see you later, Doctor. Commander. Figured she would have something to say about Garrus, with him having lost half of his face and her being the doctor on board, but I guess not. Um, uh, oh, Miranda, anything new? Commander, what can I do for you? Anything I should know regarding the Normandy? The crew's working well, and the ship appears to be performing to specifications. Do you have a minute, Miranda? Of course. Excuse me. I'm just finishing an operation report. I'm impressed, Shepard. So far, things have gone exceptionally well. As Cerberus operations go, this is one of the best I've been a part of. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Just remember who's in charge. I know exactly who's in charge. I report to him regularly. I'm here, we're both here, because he wants it that way. Cerberus gave you a second chance, Commander. Maybe you should do the same for us. What did Cerberus do that made you so loyal? Hmm. I suppose you deserve to know. Do you remember when I told you how I was genetically altered? Well, that wasn't my choice. My father created me. He's a very influential man and extremely controlling. He didn't want a daughter. He wanted a dynasty. I ran away as soon as I was old and brave enough. I went to Cerberus because I knew they could protect me. You seem capable of defending yourself. Why did you need Cerberus? My father invested a great deal in his dynasty. It wasn't a matter of just leaving. I knew he would continue to pursue his... investments. I assume that Cerberus approves of your enhanced abilities? Of course. Cerberus fully endorses anything that advances the cause of humanity. Genetic alterations included. But unlike my father and his own selfish reasons, Cerberus and the elusive man believe in a greater good. They see the bigger picture. And I feel like I have a purpose here. Yeah, so... Um... I'm a little bit, uh, I'm a little bit ambivalent on the subject of genetic engineering, of the human genetic engineering. Um, and I think a lot of it really comes down to means, uh, right? So all other things equal, I don't see an issue with improving, uh, a, the, with improving the, the genetic baseline of a particular individual, say. Uh, right, it's just that uh, usually that will be done by by illicit means, right? by means which uh, which are either intrinsically disordered due to natural law reasons, which I can, which check out my natural law lectures if you want to know more about that, um, or alternatively uh, means which are just uh, which um, which uh, can dehumanize the subject or can dehumanize the uh, the. The, the parents involved or, or what have you uh, right but if the means are, are ordinary if it's done through you know what's what's portrayed a lot in mass effect which is um, a genetic alteration uh, after birth right adults undergoing genetic alteration uh, which gradually enhances uh, enhances and cures things about them right um, I, I I don't think I don't think there's really much of a problem with that. Um, I, I really, uh, I generally don't see how it's much different than any other kind of, uh, any other kind of medicine, uh, right, which, which repairs, uh, repairs damage or, or allows us to do things we otherwise could not do, right? So I wear contacts or glasses, um, without which I wouldn't be able to see. I don't see much of a difference between, uh, in, in a, in a, uh, from an ethical standpoint, I don't see much of a difference between me putting lenses on my eyes or me getting uh, laser surgery to alter the structure of my eyeballs uh, versus uh, me taking a retrovirus, uh, which will alter my uh, my DNA strands, which will then uh, which will then get my eyes to heal themselves, or even get my eyes to work better than they otherwise normally would. Right? I, I don't see a functional difference between those things. I don't see an ethical difference between those things, really. Um, that said, uh, the way that 
Miranda is talking, this is clearly a danger with this sort of thing. And we'll, we'll obviously talk about this a lot more when we dive a little bit more into Miranda's history and we look at uh, her loyalty mission in particular, which involves a lot of this. Um, that uh, I think that that I think she's right, right? That her father did not see her so much as a person, but as a legacy. Uh, but then again, this this can be a danger, not just with genetically enhanced individuals, but with children in general, right? Excuse me. There is a there's a danger of seeing children not as um, their own people, but by seeing something we can project into. And this is the kind of thing we see in. Uh, you know, parents who live vicariously through children, things like, uh, even things like Munchausen by proxy, um, where parents will put, will sort of project their own identity into children rather than, uh, rather than treating those children as other subjects. They treat them as an extension of themselves, which is true in a very, very limited sense in that, you know, children are an extension of ourselves, that they are the the continuation of our legacy which we ourselves receive from our parents, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Right? They're they're a continuation of of our of um, of our line in a sense. But that's very different from from what Miranda's talking about here. Where her father was obsessed with having a with having a uh, perfect daughter to carry on his legacy, that kind of thing. It's uh, it's the same thing we see with like uh, the the go to example is child beauty pageants, where usually mom will take uh, will take her little girl and 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 live out her uh, fashion fantasies and beauty fantasies through this through this innocent child, um, and that you know that has um, that has destructive that has destructive effects, um, both for the child and also for the relationship between parent and child. Um, you also see this with, uh, in a lot of cases, uh, with, um, well, this is a hot topic right now, uh, the issue of, uh, of, uh, of, I want to say this delicately in line with how YouTube wants me to say it, um, with, eh, let's just say broadly, uh, trans children. Children who don't understand the issue yet, but whose parents, um, either intentionally or otherwise, uh, see signs in the children that they they are a certain way, and parents maybe confirmation bias, maybe ideological blindness, what have you, um, will lead parents to to sort of to, to express their uh, either their own psychological issues or their ideological. Uh, their ideological preconceptions onto their children uh, and sort of live those out through their children. And this is, again, this is, uh, it's the same kind of issue. And it's the same kind of issue we see here with, with uh, Miranda. So let's talk about her father, because I think what she says here will confirm a lot of what I have to say about it. Who exactly is your father? A businessman, but a very wealthy one. It's ironic. My father believed deeply in a human positive agenda. He donated generously to Cerberus before I joined them. That's how I first heard about Cerberus, through my father's connections. Who exactly is your oh, father? Oops. A businessman. It's I that's how I first heard about Cerberus, through my father's connections. Tell me a lot about your father. What happened to your mother? I never had one. Most of my genetic material is based on my father's tissue. His Y chromosome was altered with an amalgam of desired traits from various sources. How arrogant can you be? The man is completely egomaniacal. Just another reason I had to get away from him. Yeah, so again here, separation of the uh, procreation from the procreative act, so to speak, uh, is one of those natural law problems that I brought up. Right, so separating the separating child rearing from the uh, from the relationship of parents, uh, right? So from family, from marriage, right? It's a it's a kind of perversion of reproduction uh, that that's that in trying to pass on one's lineage, one warps and. And, uh, and corrupts that lineage, uh, and that you know by passing on one's family legacy, one destroys the the essence of one's of having a family. Right? It's all of this, um, all of this put together. So there's there are intrinsic problems there as well. Talk about yourself like you're just a tool to be used by your father. Or here's Cerberus. the other potential issue. Maybe I like to know where I fit in the world. It helps me find meaning in how I was created. You are who you are, Miranda. 
You don't need to make excuses for it. That's easy for you to say. We've both been engineered for greatness, Shepard. The difference is, you were great before we rebuilt you. I'm great because of it. Your spirit and personality are what make you great. It's what makes anyone great. That's kind of you. I'm not sure I believe you, but thanks for saying it. Thanks for your time, Miranda. I'll talk to you later. Anytime, Commander. I don't know how I got Renegade points for that, but okay. But yeah, um, this is the other point, right? That, uh, that this kind of mentality can lead to um, objectification of a person. Um, and in some cases, like Miranda, even objectifying oneself. Seeing oneself as merely an object to be used. I hear that Rupert is actually cooking some good meals lately. Yeah, right. That scunner couldn't serve a good haggis if his life depended on it. But all haggis taste like ass anyway. Aye, but in the right hands it can taste like mighty fine ass. <sighs> I love these two. You're the best, Commander. We just got those FBA couplings installed. Now we only have to calibrate every week instead of every day. We're thinking about celebrating our newfound free time with some Skillion 5 poker. Want to join us? Come on, Kenneth. The commander doesn't want to play cards with grease monkeys like us. Actually, that sounds interesting. Fantastic. I'll get the cards. My Skillion 5's a bit rusty. It'll be easy on the rookie, right? Of course, Commander. It's all friendly. Yeah, right. <laughs> I want 500 credits off of my engineering team. <laughs> Be gentle on the rookie. I can't believe we fell for that. It's so worth losing to see you taken down a notch. Beat me up my own game. You're all right, Shepard. Uh, I love these two. All right. Okay. Um, so I think that'll be about all. Let's go feed our fish. And... Uh, about wrap it up there so that is about uh all we've really got time for tonight so um for next week like i said i'm gonna try and get the dlc to work properly i don't know what went wrong but it had something to do with the installation um uh just because i'm trying to go off of two completely different platforms because i had to get one on steam one on origin whatever you don't care um in case you do feel free to let ask and uh if you might know anything about this maybe help me out <laughs> uh either way i will get it up working properly by next week so we will at least meet zaid uh and then we will go and get uh recruit morden solace as well so that'll be a good uh couple of things we will be doing and then we'll move on from there probably recruiting uh the next decision will be between recruiting uh jack and grunt so the krogan and the uh the prisoner so that'll be uh, our next major decision. So that'll probably not be next week. That'll be ne that'll be in two weeks. Um, but that'll be our next uh, major uh, story decision of which we do first. Not that it makes much difference, but whichever. Um, in any case, next next week we'll definitely be going after Morden Solus. So um, I will see everybody then. Uh, then uh, if I don't see you tomorrow for Red Dead Redemption Two. Uh, in that, we are going to be doing some stuff around Saint Denis. We're probably going after um, uh, what's his name, the uh, 1899 Jeffrey Epstein, um, the, uh, the the creepy child uh, abductor. Uh, so that'll be a good time. Uh, so I will hopefully see you then. If not, I will hopefully see you next week uh, for more Mass Effect 2. Uh, keep an eye out sometime between now and then. Hopefully, I should have uh, my next video, my, se my next uh, standalone video lecture uh, edited and uploaded. We'll see. Um, I, I hope I don't need to, you know, re-record or fix anything, but we'll see. Um, so, uh, with that, I will say goodbye and good night and it has been a uh, it's been a good stream so i will see everyone next time bye bye